Is there a husband class about, like, you know, no. causing orgasms or whatever? Uh, <laughs> as if the woman's orgasm matters. Yeah, right. Hoax. They have what's called their priesthood session, but they don't talk about how to be a good husband. They just, like, get all about the scriptures and you yeah, need to, no. you know. They learn how to ask teenagers about their masturbation habits at their priesthood class. Yeah, right, One right, yeah. 100%. Whoa. Yes. That's a real handy class. <laughs> 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 Very good one. Oh shit. <laughs> God awful movie. 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 Welcome back to the Gamcast, where each week we sample another selection from Christian cinema because the salt isn't going to pour itself into the wound. I'm your host, No Illusions. Sitting 700 miles to my immediate left is my good friend, Heath Enright. Heath, welcome back. Thanks, Noah. We got a Mormon rom-com. Very excited. Yeah. Let's do this. Yep. <laughs> and sitting 900 miles to my northeast is my bad friend, Eli Bosnick. Eli, how are you this fine afternoon, sir? What a conclusion to Mormon Movie Month, Noah. What yep, a conclusion. Yep, the live show means we're going to have to wrap it up a little bit early, but damn, <laughs> are we finishing strong. And we're also excited to welcome as guest masochist, the co-host of the Latter-day Lesbians podcast, Mary and Shelley. Welcome to God Awful Movies. Thank hey, you. Thanks for having us. Happy to be here. Are you really? Because we made you watch this movie. <laughs> so, you, you I can hear the lying in your voice when you said that. <laughs> are you calling me a lying whore? Kind of like this woman in the movie. You are, you are a lying whore. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I forgive you. Uh -huh. okay. no, I forgive See? you, actually, is the way this goes. <laughs> right? We might end up together in heaven, don't That's, but No, only you if have you to lead us through tithing. the veil. You have to lead us That's, through the veil. It's a very complicated so, yeah. thing. I could just do it last minute, right? <laughs> mm. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think you can. Give it yeah. a go. Pay, Convert just in time. Just back pay your tithing. You can. You're, you're good. Yeah, this was this was hard for me to watch, not only because it's a horrible, stupid movie with bad acting, but there's like little triggers because I've been through this shit. So. Mm -hmm. And I just triggered because it was a horrible movie with bad act. <laughs> <Sure>. Yeah. <laughs> That'll do it. <laughs> Same. <laughs> right? I don't have the Mormon excuse that Shelly does. <laughs> All right. So tell us, Heath, what will we be breaking down today? We watched Charlie, the 2002 Mormon rom-com. It's the story of a good Mormon boy from Utah trying to fix a heathen lady from New York City. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's the taming of the Jew. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Good one. No, he does call her a Jewess at some point, doesn't he? Yeah. That's so <laughs> scary. Yep. And Eli, how bad was this movie? Well... If you love Mormon Movie Month, but you're sad we've never managed to cram every trope, gag, and horrifying worldview into a single film, you will love <laughs> this movie. It really does hit all of the bases here. Yeah. So is there anything you guys want to nominate this one for being the best at being the worst at? Yeah. Okay. I'm going to go with best worst montages, but in particular, they had false starts of montages that they like mm. tried and failed at yeah. in the movie. <laughs> like they tried to have Bible study be a montage for a second. And it's just like two seconds of a guy holding a Bible and then like, okay, cut. No, that's, that's nothing. Just, that's, 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 sorry, that's, that's all we had. Oh, shit. I don't know how we thought that was like going to be a musical <laughs> montage. Lazy montages. I was going to go with the best worst bonus plot. <laughs> we'll get there obviously in the movie but this movie gets like an hour and six minutes in it looks us straight in the face and goes oh I thought you were going to take over now fuck um, <laughs> shit shit right and then um and then <laughs> <laughs> so so you'll learn with all things Mormon if you haven't hit a point yet where there's like a tear jerking oh my god if I'm not Mormon I will lose everything in my entire life then you're not to the end of the movie yet. They That's will true. hit on that every time. I knew it was coming. I'm like, what's it going to be? Oh, yeah, yeah. There it is. There it is. <laughs> yeah, there we refer to that as a heart cell. It's called heart cell. Heart cell. Hey, oh, hey, hey. All, all right. All okay, right. this is the well, term for it. Well, well there, similarly. There, yeah, there actually is a term for it. There's yeah. a, a company called Heart Cell, and they Get are the, the ones who create the... I'm not even kidding. <laughs> I know so... You guys, you, you have no idea the knowledge I have in this bullshit. Um, they are the ones who create the music that makes you feel shit. And so you're like, oh, that's the spirit I felt telling like me Mormonism is true. Yeah. That's it's, amazing. 
It's anything yeah. from like, oh, this poor kid's dog died and he's praying for for Heavenly Father to blah, blah, blah. Or, and then he feels oh, something. No, and Mormonism my, is true. My teacher was drinking coffee. I'm oh, so upset. that's a great one. That's actually a movie. There's Skip an emotional manipulation <laughs> Foley company in Utah. Yes. Music company, yeah. yeah, yeah. Yes. Called the Heart Cell. This is Record amazing. Label. Heart Cell. Heart Cell. And you know what? No one is surprised. Literally nobody <laughs> is surprised. No. And I could pick it out every time. I'm like, oh, Mary, that's heart cell music. Yep. <laughs> every time. <laughs> yeah. Well, I was going to say this was the best movie for manipulation, Ooh, which is also yeah. the worst thing to have also in a movie. true. Perfect best worst. <laughs> nice yeah, to think. Exactly. I, mm -hmm. I chose, I mean, there were so many, but I went with best worst first date. Yes. Like for <laughs> real. Sure. <laughs> Woo. But also very common. Mm -hmm. No, I love being shamed by my date on my first date. You want wine? <laughs> uh, no, I don't think so. <laughs> so great. <laughs> we don't you're, drink you're wine. You're jumping ahead, Mary. <laughs> sorry. We'll get there, everyone listening. We will, sorry, I know it sorry. sounds fucked up, but yeah, we'll get there. Mormons right? don't drink, it turns out. <laughs> it does oh, turn yeah, out. No, 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 no. Not just alcohol. They don't drink Coffee or tea, or tea. <laughs> but you but you can be nine hundred pounds drinking Red Bulls for you know, every five hours. That's great. You can be oh, saved. Really? You can go to the temple, mm -hmm. but you sip some coffee like the Devil's Brew, and you you will be shunned. You can't go to the temple. This is some shit, guys. Telling you, I don't get it. Yeah, we try not to talk about the line around wrapping around Starbucks with all those Lincolns full of uh, Mormon prophets and, <laughs> and the Quorum of the Twelve. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They're just getting the hot chocolate, but they're probably yeah, like, yeah, cool sure. it down a little so we're cool not breaking God's words. Yeah, mm -hmm. like Eli taking it at Eli temperature. <laughs> exactly. And I, of course, am going to go with best worst kiss. Oh, so bad. No, look, I could be stereotypical. Oh, these actors are gay and that's why they can't kiss each other. <laughs> la, 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 la. Do I believe that? Yes. But yeah. here's what I will say. If I was asked to kiss Ted Cruz, I would do it with more gusto <laughs> and passion than when these actors finally join limps. I have seen children press two Barbie dolls up to get <laughs> together with more passion than these two actors kiss. Yes. That's fine. I wonder if real in real life they're like blood siblings. Maybe that's why it was oh, so oh, they related. That is true. <laughs> I could see me having a hard time with that. But even mm -hmm. then, like, and I don't even like my brothers that much. I could put more passion into an acting kiss than, than they did on I mean, on Angelina screen. Jolie yeah. did. Um, a fucking mannequin. Yeah. <laughs> a mannequin. <laughs> so bad. What? Yeah. Wow. All right. Well, I'll tell you what. We've got a whole movie and a half on the other side of this break. So we're going to keep the break short. But when we come back, we'll dive into the mayonnaise sandwich that is Charlie. And then the sensor sees the mouth naturally open and bam, hits you with a meatball. That's genius. Hey, guys, what you doing there? Dude, you got to check out Eli's new thing. Okay. I call it the meatball gun. The meatball gun? Yeah, it's the ultimate nutritional solution for people who are short on time. It hooks right to your computer like this, and its patented sensor observes when your mouth naturally opens wide enough from yawning or breathing and fires a meatball into your mouth. Wow. Nice. Oh, oh, yeah, that'll happen. Mm -hmm. Okay, guys, if you want to eat well and you're short on time, why not just try Factor? What's fact? Oh, sorry, it got me. It yeah, got me. so What's Factor, Factor, America's number one ready-to-eat meal kit, can help you fuel up fast with flavorful and nutritious ready-to-eat meals delivered straight to your door. You'll save time, eat well, and stay on track reaching your goals. Wait, ready to eat so I don't have to chop or cook them? That's right. Factor's fresh, never frozen meals are ready in just two minutes. So all you got to do is heat and enjoy. <laughs> all right. I don't know, Heath. What, what if I'm on a special diet? Well, then Factor's got your Bacter, Noah. They offer delicious flavor-packed options on the menu each week to fit a variety of lifestyles from keto to calorie smart, vegan and veggie and protein plus. Prepared by chefs and approved by dietitians, each meal has all the ingredients you need to feel satisfied all day long while meeting your goals no matter what they are. I don't know, Heath. Food delivered to the house? Isn't that bad for the environment? With Factor, you can rest assured you're making a sustainable choice. They offset 100% of their delivery emissions, source 100% renewable electricity for their production sites and offices, and feature sustainably sourced seafood in their meals. All right, Heath, I'm sold. Where do I sign up? Head to factormeals.com slash awful50 and use the code awful50 
to get 50% off. That's code AWFUL50 at factormeals.com slash AWFUL50 to get 50% off. All right, he thinks. Eli's gun shot me with a meatball. Yeah, we saw. So. Mm -hmm. Almost died. You're fine. You're good. Almost. You gonna finish that? <laughs> and then the credits come up, and that's the end of the movie. Wow. That was so good. Yeah, this movie we wrote is gonna be amazing. Uh, guys? Yeah, Steve, what's up, man? I'm just going by page count here, but it, it looks like the movie is going to come up uh, a little short. How short? Yeah, how long is it now? Uh, th 35 minutes. Mm, okay, that I mean, that seems really long. How long are movies? Like 90 minutes. That, that, that can't be right. Are they? Oh, no, it's true. I, I checked. That's fine, that's fine. We can pad it out a little bit. A couple of fishing montages. Oh, maybe they can ride the Ferris wheel again for a while. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, that'd be great. How long would that make it? Uh, I don't know. 40 minutes? <sighs> All right. So let's let's really dig into the Mark plot line, right? Maybe like she goes back to New York and uh, when she's mad at Sam, you know, she, she, she breaks up with Mark. I thought she already broke up with Mark. I'm, no, I'm confused. Well, Right, right, but she, well, she, now she's going to do it in person, right? So again, in the movie, how how long would that be? I mean, if we stretched it so it was really tiresome, uh, an hour, I think. All right, well, and then you know we would show we could show their wedding, Sam and Charlie. Uh, they could have some kids. Mm -hmm. Oh, and should we show them having dinner, right? Oh, yeah. Still not there. Fine. You know what? We'll add a useless third of the movie at the end where she gets cancer and dies. Is that long enough to be a fucking movie? Yes. You know, we end up having to add a lot of useless cancer to a lot of our movies. Yeah, movies are too long. Thank you. Who doesn't want a nice 20 minute movie, right? Exactly. I mean, I think they call those TV shows. Right. TV shows. Yes. I. Yep. Heard it. And we're back for the breakdown and we're going to open up on a VO telling us that he always thought love would be uncomplicated. That's dumb. That's yeah, a dumb what a thing dumb to say thing. At the beginning. <laughs> yep. Also, the word for that is simple. <laughs> it's a dumb start, but I got to throw out there, having been born and bred and raised Mormon for 40 something years, you are actually taught that if you just marry a worthy person, slash meaning virgin, sure. in the temple, your marriage will be great. God will bless it and you're good, which is not true, but you know. Okay. Yeah, okay, all right, yeah. I can see where he would have get this. The sex does sound uncomplicated in a good <laughs> way. <laughs> Nothing like two virgins going right. at it where, well, after they've been wearing I their freaky-ass Mormon uh, underwear. I don't think everybody was a virgin in this movie. Oh, that's right. She was a whore. <laughs> I forgot about the whore. Okay. Right, right, right. Yeah, no, that's right. Okay, well, from that stupid comment, it takes a turn right away, too. It's like, yeah, but then a woman with agency showed up in my life and <laughs> fucked up my whole plan. Damn it. Dun, and that's dun, the plot. Dun. Agency. I, I kind of hate that word. And you know, he might have acted like he wanted a woman with agency, but he couldn't wait to cover those porn shoulders. Yeah. Which oh. unfortunately, <laughs> that does happen later in the movie, but it's so subtle. It's like, oh, we lost Charlie. <laughs> yeah, right. Right. <laughs> I know. She was kind of hot and then uh, she was not. Yeah. yeah. So we have uh, Sam is our main male character here, and he's in a, in the driveway with his dad playing a game of exposit, <laughs> right? He's like, well, okay, so you're a single, my son, you're, you're single, and you're going to pick up a young woman who is also available in the next scene. And he's like, if I have to, right? Mm -hmm. I know he, he kind of acts like he's like, I don't know, some junior high kid who hasn't discovered girls yet. Oh, wait, he hasn't. <laughs> right. No, no. <laughs> and this is, I'm just throwing this right on out there. We check for it. We do a garment check, meaning as an ex-Mormon, I can pick out who is wearing the magic underwear from like miles away. <laughs> Yeah, they call so, that the celestial <laughs> yeah, smile. He had the celestial smile. I'm like, dude's a return missionary. He's probably scared of women. And by the way, he fucking sucks at basketball. Yes. Having having been an Thank you. Having been an, an ex college basketball lesbian with a mullet myself, like I can look at that <laughs> and and just be just dislike him for 
who he is as a person and his basketball. And his basketball. Yeah. He was so bad at basketball. They had to do a cut to have a reasonable (laughs) miss of a shot. Yes. Yes. Not even even to like get him to make shots. Like, okay, (laughs) fine. Actor can't hit a shot very easy. But to miss one in any kind of reasonable basketball (laughs) miss way, they had to do a cut. Can we get the ball to hit the rim a little bit? That'd be great. Yeah. Just to reset the 24 second clock, they need yeah, to do a cut. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Thank God they cut and changed camera angles to get that botched shot. That was really mm-hmm. important. It was. They, couldn't they have picked a different sport? I mean, he clearly. I don't know that he was going to do better at something else. That's Although, true. like something where with a higher rate of injury, like make him play highlight, that'd be fun. Um, <laughs> something like that. Tag, four square. Yeah. Right, right, there right, you right. go. There you go. <laughs> So eventually, dad talks him into picking the beautiful woman up from the airport by bribing him with $70 and letting him borrow the Mustang. This So the movie plays this character as though like he's 19 or 20 and the girl's like 19 or 20 or whatever, but they're like in their 30s, right? These yeah. actors. <laughs> yeah. Well, in real life, he's got to be at least 21 because he's he has the celestial smile of the magic underwear, which means he served a mission at 19, 20, 20. He's at least 21. Okay. I will do the Mormon math for you guys all day. Don't well, you worry. Also, the assumption is, so she orders a Merlot at the restaurant. We're not so- there yet. But well, she's right. at least 21. But the assumption is that she's 21. Right. God, we're that. good. Mm-hmm. God, sure. we're good. Can I point out, too, the fact that this guy is like, I don't want to do this. We don't see him having a job the entire time. Nope. Nope. Like, he's not doing <laughs> shit. That guy's right. supposed to take yes. the girl out. <laughs> but that, that uh, Charlie's dad, though, is supposed to be his boss. Do we know what the business is? Nope. Yeah, it's Bain Capital. <laughs> <Clearly>. <laughs> <laughs> Well, so so Charlie's dad is Sam's dad's boss, right? But as near as we can tell, Sam never has an occupation throughout this entire movie. Right. Yeah, no, no job, no car. Like, just fucking go, take her out, you selfish bastard. Well, maybe right? he doesn't have any money because he doesn't really have a job. And well, he I, that a could car. be. Yeah. <laughs> this guy's just a, he's a, a catch. He's a catch. <laughs> I <was thinking> the <laughs> same thing. <laughs> so now we got to go to the airport. We're going to have to meet our titular character. Charlie, we are going to meet her exposed midriff first. I mean, I'm turned down just thinking about it. Well, yeah. you did yeah. say, she was looking um, good. She was looking good. I mean, didn't you say like titular or some kind of thing like that? Yeah, it's I was hoping kind of, for tits. I know. Was there, I, I All know, we got was a navel. Uh, it was a navel. It wasn't a boob. Mm-hmm. No, yeah, right, right. No, but we see boobs before we see her face. Nice medium innie. Right, like th- this movie is... Very clearly, like looking at her, like, can you believe the way this woman is dressed? I'm just uh, mm-hmm. scandalized. Oh yeah, <laughs> I mean, we're gonna focus on it with our cameras yes, for a right, while, exactly. but we're also it's <laughs> right. a weird combination of sex and shame, but in a judgy way. <laughs> yes. I, I'm just gonna watch porn so I can judge the actresses. Like, yeah. right. <laughs> <laughs> I know. It's funny how the Mormons can make even just showing shoulders and a midriff really well, sinful looking. They had mm-hmm. to really point out that she was a bad, bad whore. Yeah. Because, oh, yeah. I mean, shoulders is one thing, but a midriff, like right. a navel? <laughs> Fuck! <laughs> Everyone's turned on. Heavenly Father's crying. Oh, yeah, you, <laughs> that that so, belly shot was like, oh, she's mm-hmm. a crack whore. Oh, and Absolutely. then she like pole dances from the gate at the airport yeah, right, right up to <laughs> Sam with his nerd sign. <laughs> yeah, so she gets a call from her boyfriend in New York. She's got a boyfriend back in New York because she's a whore. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And he's like, oh, how do I know you're not going to fall in love with the guy picking you up from the airport? And then she sees Sam and he's so dorky. She's like, you've got nothing to worry about. We're so mismatched. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right. But are Which, they? <laughs> they were. They, uh, they should have stayed that way, but... Yeah, yeah. What are they? The foreshadowing, that's what it's called, right? The foreshadowing there is just, it's just beautiful. Yeah. I'll never well, love Right, him. you got to have that conflict. It's like, oh, they're oil and water. They're not going to get along at all. And that's mm-hmm. when it's such a surprise <laughs> later when they managed to work it out. Like, right. And, it's, and it was. I was I was absolutely shocked. Yeah. I'm sure you were. I was thrown. Completely <laughs> thrown. <laughs> I would, you know, I wish I'd run a stopwatch to find out how far into the movie, movie he actually says, aren't you cold? Do you remember? Yes. He's like yes. asking her if she's cold. Clearly <laughs> put a sweater on. Yeah. Cover up those porn shoulders. Wouldn't you be more comfortable if less of your skin <laughs> was showing so simply? Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Right. yeah. I would be more comfortable if people didn't think I was with a prostitute. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> God. 
So, yeah, so he drives her. No, I'm sorry. He goes to put her luggage in the trunk. She takes the keys out of the trunk and she drives because she's a wild one. Uh, Power oh. move. That really was a dick move, I thought, on her part. I would have done the same thing. I th- I was pretty impressed. I was pretty impressed. She You're is impressed. very free spirited and he is very staid. This is never going to work in a romantic way. It could never She's work. She's never seen this plot that could point not before. Be the plot. First of all, the fact that she's allowed to drive like period, end of story, being a woman. Yeah, pretty progressive. <laughs> I know. For I, Saudi it, it Arabia. <laughs> <laughs> Slash Provo, Utah. Or Utah. Yeah, well, right, I was going to say, right. when did they get that? When did, yeah. when did women drive in Utah? It's very recent. <laughs> okay. So she pulls it. She sees a carnival on the side of the road. She pulls in, but very quickly, you know, because she's free spirited. She's running. He can barely even keep up with her, which is impressive because she's wearing very high heels and, and just hauling ass. Yeah. And she was still going faster than him because he's a dork. Yep. So so basketball, <laughs> running, breathing, all of these oh, yeah, things. Nice. He's, he's, he's getting his hair cut. He's bad at <laughs> yes. all of that. Yeah. I know. It's just so, so, you know, it's so air quotes wild of her to like turn into this, to this uh, makeshift carnival and just like, I'm not even afraid of Mormon carny rides. Let's do this. <laughs> yes. <laughs> right, yes, this wild and crazy manic pixie dream girl is like, ooh, Ferris wheel. <laughs> yeah. oh, Ferris there- wheel before 5 p.m.? <laughs> right. How dare there she? There was like a rickety ass Ferris wheel in like a park swing. And this yeah. is the carnival. Mm-hmm. Ooh, you're so daring. Dial it up to 80. We're doing this. Yeah, as in 80. I'm going to the parking lot. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, so, so, so she they get their Ferris wheel tickets and then we get this like, long scene of them like riding the Ferris wheel together. There's uh, like having awkward conversations. This, by the way, is the first time where he's like, aren't you cold in your slut clothes? Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yeah, let's begin the judgment. Yeah. Well, also, what do you all think of how much she just threw herself at him in a joking way, I guess, but like flirted hardcore right from the very beginning? Absolutely, Mm. because she starts it as a bit but then it never transforms in the movie. No. <laughs> right. So like by the end of the movie, I'm like, man, she really committed to that bit of liking him by marrying him, having his <laughs> child and dying of cancer. In his you heart. ruined because, it! Because yeah. Spoiler! Was, spoiler. God. First of all, it's about this movie, so it's a de-spoiler. That's true. That's, that's, true. that's a very good point. <laughs> Thing yeah. No, but she starts by buying what, like the entire day of the Ferris wheel, like out yes. from under a line of kids, theoretically. <laughs> yes. her, She's buys all the tickets and the guy's like, all right, closing the window for the fucking Ferris wheel, I guess. Great. Sorry, kids. <laughs> and then she goes up to the old guy. Oh, yeah. She's, yeah, she's like, this is going to be a minute. Yeah, exactly. She goes up to the old guy who's running the Ferris wheel, hands him the giant amount of tickets and is like, we are going to fuck on this Ferris wheel, old man. Look uh-huh. at me. Uh-huh. Fuck on this Ferris wheel. <laughs> so he's like, he's like, okay, make a wish foundation, kids. Sorry. Yeah, like, yeah. Come back tomorrow. Yeah, exactly. We're going to watch some fucking on the Ferris wheel. One of them was like, I wanted to see people fucking on the Ferris wheel. That was my, <laughs> that was my wish. Oh my God. I, w- I wish this had happened. It would have been so much more interesting That's than true. what we actually That'd got. Great. It's worth noting that when you buy all the tickets for the Ferris wheel, that doesn't change your experience of the Ferris wheel. Yeah, I don't wheel. think that's how the ticket systems are supposed to work. It's not like no. she's going to booth hop during <laughs> their fucking... <laughs> and it's not like they took up every single one of the, the freaking cars in the Ferris wheel. Like, nope. The kids could have still ridden whatever. She just didn't like them. No, no, no. She hates kids. I wanted to point out, too, that the movie makes it seem like she is so horrible and so wild and so crazy. Like, I would think she would at least, you know, smoke a cigarette and flip it off the Ferris wheel. Something really, really (laughs) wild and bad. No, no, No. they're never going to get there. (laughs) But there's also, there's this like montage of shots of them like having bad conversation. Like Rizzo from Greece. Yeah, there you go. (laughs) Absolutely. Yes. Oh, that would have been hot. So, But they have this like montage of shots of them just not getting along and having bad conversation. But like you can see, like she's actually kind of impressed with how very, very Mormon he is, right? <laughs> then we cut to we cut over to Charlie's mom and dad and her grandma waiting for her to come home, going like, or I guess they're not waiting for her to come home. They're waiting for him to show up for her to take him out on a date, right? We've skipped ahead. Yeah, is this their first actual date? Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah. This is heading into that, whatever that restaurant is right across from Temple Square. I can't think of the name of it, but I, I have been there. As, as we were counting are. shots of the temple. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Oh, you could tell the restaurant by like looking out the window and looking at like the table setup. Yeah. Exactly. Pretty much every time they uh, showed nice. the Mormon temple, we we drank. We turned it into a drinking game. <laughs> oh, nice. Yeah. There was lots to drink about. There was a uh, lot to yeah. drink. Yeah. I like that you're able to just look at these characters and scenes and see everything like tree rings. You're like, okay, that guy's a virgin who fucks really badly. <laughs> <laughs> There's a guy at BYU who has the magic underpants. Oh, yeah. Oh, hell yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Remember the, the, the missionaries you spotted on the escalator oh, in, the, yeah, in the very beginning? I think that was at the airport. I spotted so many like extras in the, the movie that, you know, like the the, the the doorman back in New York, whatever. Mm-hmm. They were all Mormon dudes. I could yep. see their fucking yep. lines. I'm like, I got nice. you. I got you. Wait. Nice try. That black guy was a Mormon? No, no. And as we were watching too, I was like, they're all except for that guy. Yeah. Okay, that's right. <laughs> I was about to say. He we recorded recently got a video legalized. Of, yeah, we recorded. Yeah, there's this. It's 1975 now. It's all good. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, no, it's say. been a while. You're, you're totally right. <laughs> Yeah, we we so love all been. the races. <laughs> yeah, no, it's all evened out. Now. We just hate the gays now. Yeah, mm-hmm. we got to pick something. Sure. Anyway, <laughs> yeah, not the black guy. It was funny because we were recording a video of us watching the movie, and that was this thing. I'm like, he's Mormon. He's Mormon. Now, black nope. guy is not Mormon. <laughs> 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 So we get the scene where like uh, mom and dad are like, I don't know about you dating a Mormon, but grandma's like, I, I don't know. He's walking up now. He looks pretty fuckable to me. Right? Like, if you don't want him, I'll, I'll take seconds. Yeah. Grandma fucks in this movie. I like her. She's a fun oh, character yeah. in this movie. She is a fun character. Doesn't she read tarot at one part? I'm, I'm, like, I'm not sure what was happening. I don't remember that. She did have face cards. That's a yeah. big no-no in Mormon. Oh, she she played solitaire. I guess that's the yeah. same amount of Same idea. Yeah. Yeah, we don't, yeah. We don't do face cards because it makes you gamble and, and touch yourself. I don't know. I don't remember the exact, but we were Is we that were what's been to. doing it this whole time? Uh-huh. No. Not necessarily in that order. Whatever, uh, whatever. <laughs> I like that that this not Mormon grandma had to have like the spiky hair just to show that she was a little wild. Oh, yeah. yeah, it's yeah. the hair. Yeah, Methodist, lesbian, same thing. Yes. Yeah. Oh, I yeah. I think there were a couple of lesbian women there. We can get to that in a hot minute. <laughs> so. They head out for an exciting night in fucking Salt Lake City. We get them at this restaurant across from the Temple Square and, and we get her going like, wow, that was very interesting seeing Temple Square. And I'm like, oh, it's a fairy tale. <laughs> for sure. And then she even says something like, you have your castle about, I don't know, maybe yeah. they are mm-hmm. in a fairy tale or something. Or and just he got offended it. by it. Did he? Yeah. He was like, there you go again. Like, she's still joking around. It is a fucking castle. It's a castle you have to pay 10% of your income to go into. Yeah. That's true. (laughs) Anyway, that's how they get you. He just couldn't. He was so sensitive about anything Mormon that when she called it a castle, he was like, oh, visibly disturbed. Did you catch that? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I love this line, too. She goes like, she's like, you almost got us kicked out of Temple Square. And I I just wrote my notes. I can say from experience, that's harder to do than you would think. (laughs) I tried really hard. They just avoided me. They just avoided me like someone they had had a a team meeting before I entered Temple <laughs> yep, Square. Yep, ignore it and it'll go away. Yeah, uh huh. <laughs> yeah, but didn't she play in the fountain? Yeah, she's uh, a mad she girl. Waited in the reflecting pool. <laughs> oh, the reflecting pool. <laughs> that bitch. Like how disrespectful. <laughs> it's Dharma and Greg. They made Dharma and Greg into yep, a movie, yeah. right? <laughs> they were just like, oh, she's wacky. What in the f- reflecting pool? Well, except that she can't be Dharma. She's like Mormon Dharma, you know? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's called Marma. (laughs) (laughs) You know, I also love how they uh, she refers to it as as Mormon Vatican. You know, it's it makes me laugh because the writers of this movie who are clearly Mormon, they're just like, let's put in every stereotypical comment that Gentiles. That's a real thing that Mormons call (laughs) non-Mormons say about us. That one's taken. Wait, Mormons do that too? That's like a a, a Jewish, uh-huh. not Jewish thing, right? No, you're right. They, they took it from us. Okay. Yeah, and they call it Zion too. So yeah, they, that's true. They do. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So okay, so then we get like because the date ends with her going, but I got to admit, I kind of want to learn about Mormonism. I'm like, yep, fairy tales. And so we get this like one of one of Heath's like false start montages where she's going to learn about Mormonism, but they can only think of like two things that wouldn't be offensive. <laughs> Right. right? <laughs> Wait, can, can, can we pause? I think we skipped over the whole ordering wine thing, or did we talk about it? Oh, we that? did. We, we did. About we did. It briefly. If I, when, 
you know, no, I was judgmental too. If a regular ass normal kind person who thinks that drinking is a bad idea, if their friend orders alcohol, they might say, oh yeah, by the way, they don't serve it here. But the look on his face like, oh my God, you just ordered injectable heroin. Like, that's- Right, you have embarrassed <laughs> me here in Mormonism. Yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. He acts like she asked the waitress what that pussy do. Like the level <laughs> of disgust right? and horror. Also, just quick filmmaking note. I know we have so much movie to get to, but I just have to talk about it. What a fucking insane shot. This waitress's back yes. takes up nine tenths of the shot for this entire scene. We just see them poking out from behind her like it's shy true. toddlers. Yeah. It's, it's true. That's funny. Uh, so we get this boring ass uh, get to no Mormonism montage where she draws him and they go to he points to churches and they look at art. They go to cookouts. He spins kids, you know, that all that shit. Oh, yeah. oh my we were, God. Re- I we that. rewound the kid spin the like slow mo twice twirl. so we could get it on our <laughs> video because <laughs> it's so Mormon. It's so fucking Mormon. So the girl who's all wild, she's hanging out with like the family people. And suddenly the dorky guy that she's like, oh, he's such a dork. Oh, he's a family man. And guess mm-hmm. what? The heart cell music comes in. I'm like, yep. boom. <laughs> Yeah. Perfect fucking timing. Yep. Yeah, horrible. By the way, did they borrow a child as like a prop from <laughs> yep. another couple to sure do did. the family spinny dance thing? They just fucking run around everywhere in Utah. You could just find one on the That's street. That's true. Everyone yeah, has they a million. Have, You're oh, like, okay. they have more than enough. I mean, I have seven. Supply and demand. It's like the okay. It's like the lime scooters, Heath. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Also, I always, I have to point this out because this is, again, just like Eli said, we're, we're going to go way over time on this if I point out every time they do a dumb filmmaking thing. But this montage, she's supposed to be there for a few days. This montage lasts a year. We saw I that. Know. Right? We get him. They're, they're raking leaves. They're making snowmen. It's snowing. They're skinny dipping now. Like, well, that didn't happen. But no. every season, <laughs> like, how long is this I know. Date? It seemed yes. like this one date lasted a year. That's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> but I was like, what happened to her life? in New York. Yes. They just left it indefinitely. Yes. They didn't explain any of that. That is, but yes. <laughs> when she finally talks to her fiance, Mark, she's like, yeah, sorry, I've been busy. Like, what the fuck? You've been yeah, busy been for a year? A year? <laughs> Hi, sorry. I did like a year-long montage of Mormonism just I've now. Busy. Did fucking Thanos blip you away? What the fuck? <laughs> it's been a crazy weather week. There was a fucking snow fall. <laughs> it was Somehow autumn. it rained Christmas. I don't know. I'm sorry. My phone died. Couldn't find my charger for a year. Sorry, I couldn't call you. <laughs> so the montage wraps up. They're in the they're in, I guess, his dad's backyard. And and she's basically they're having this like, yeah, I know it's really important to you, but your religion is ridiculous conversation. Right. Mm-hmm. And this is where he's like, well, you have to like what you have to do is you have to believe it beforehand. And then you have to ask yourself in your head if you were right <laughs> to believe it beforehand. And until you tell yourself, yes, you're wrong. That's it. It's that easy. <laughs> it works perfectly. Yeah. It's so good because he's like, well, you got to pray about it. And she's like, God, are you there? And he's like, not the way you do with other true things. <laughs> it's like a heartburn. But I was also, shut up, shut up. You're stupid. You're stupid. Stop asking basic questions. And then she's like, oh, it's so cute when your worldview falls apart and you get all panicky. <laughs> she likes it. So a quick a quick insert of a true story. Back when I was Mormon, I was starting to not believe some of the things. And I went and I talked to my bishop about it. And I said, what, what do you do when you think something is not true? And he says, well, you pray about it. And I said, yeah, I have prayed about it, but I still feel like it's not true. And he says, you just keep praying about it until God has your beliefs in alignment with the prophet. Mm-hmm. So, <laughs> you keep yep. on praying until you're like, fuck, okay, uh-huh. no, God's going to tell me. You know, if you roll the die enough times, eventually you're going to get us. <laughs> you have to jump into the river tied to a rock and then either you don't die, yes. you die both ways and then you're not, you mm-hmm. were a Mormon. Mm-hmm. You're a witch. Well, and I love to, like, because she's kind of like trying to like take a piss on this, right? So she's like, so, so wait, so when you pray, you hear voices? And he goes, no, that would be silly. <laughs> you hear, you feel voices in your heart. Because that's not silly. No, that's, that's fucking that's perfectly stupid normal. is what it is. <laughs> oh, but that's so, that is so right on. This And this again is how heart 
sell, like this whole thing comes in. Like when missionaries go to your house, they tell you these wonderful stories about love and, you know, a bunch of bullshit actually. And then when you see people kind of tear up, like they're feeling emotions because they're, they're thinking about their child who died from cancer or whatever, and they want to be with them again, the missionaries will see that and be like, that feeling you're having, that's the spirit right. telling you the church yeah. is true. Boom. I put a name to that feeling in your heart, which is maybe sadness for your child, but we're going to call it the church is true spirit. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. Crushing it. <laughs> so like he convinces her to kneel for the least interesting reason possible. <laughs> oh God. And he goes to pray and she's just kind of like, like staring at him doing like silly hands and shit the whole time. And <laughs> this is the last time she's going to be likable in the whole movie. So soak it up, I guess. Right. So we cut to we cut to this scene where grandma is critiquing Charlie's art and I love grandma so much. No, first of all, we should point out grandma is whispering at a level where you can she's barely audible, right? Mm-hmm, she's trying mm-hmm. not to technically be in this movie or something. She hates it. <laughs> yeah. So but she's looking at her art and Charlie has painted some fruit, a bowl of fruit and and the, and grandma's like that's fucking boring. Charlie, that's just, like, I mean, technically, I can tell it's fruit, but who gives a shit? It's like the generic shit you would find in a model home. <laughs> if I said that to my kids age 14 and younger, they would be in tears. Like, that was some rude ass shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I believe her actual words, the opening was, it's technically fine. <laughs> 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 right? I mean, I guess it's an apple. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's, it's, I mean, oh. was she criticizing her because she's like, you're right. I need to start painting Jesus from now on. Well, that's yeah. what happens. It ha- this was a very important turning point where grandma's, <laughs> well, sure everyone was. looks up to grandma and grandma's like, you know, you have to feel things. The whole trajectory of her art career changed at that moment. Yes. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Mm-hmm. I need to draw Jesus. Yeah. Yeah, because basically the, like what, what this is supposed to be is grandma saying, you know, don't go with what's comfortable and what you know. You know, why don't you try bone in a Mormon once and see how that works out for <laughs> oh, you? Oh, so right? it was a metaphor. Mm-hmm. I get it. Nice. Mm-hmm. Very clever. Okay. Did she draw a banana and like <laughs> plums? Banana. Was that <laughs> a banana with two kiwis on, yeah, a kiwi right, on right. either side. <laughs> <laughs> once again, if I wasn't gay before, I am now. Okay. Uh-huh. There is, it changed you. <laughs> it sure did. <laughs> we cut to later. We're going to meet Charlie's New York boyfriend, Mark. He, she comes home. He's like Skyped in to talk mm-hmm. to her. He's like, what happened? That that montage was a year long and I haven't seen you. So <laughs> it's like, hey, what's up, Charlie? How you doing? <laughs> a year later, like we're still engaged, right? The is, fuck? Okay. Is Sam actually a better actor than Mark, though? No. Uh, Mark know. is a better actor. Mark is bad. But they, they all suck. I mean, <laughs> they it's all like, suck. what do you hate yeah. worse? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's bad. I got to throw this out there really quickly. The actor who plays Sam, he, and you, we, y'all might have already seen these, but he also plays in these Mormon Old Testament videos, but they have him like in, in brown face. So he looks like <gasps> a Lamanite, like, like oh. an, an indigenous person. <laughs> Oh, no. my God. Fucking awesome. Yeah, it's called, uh, I want to say New Testament. I'll send you the link, but oh, hell yeah. yeah. That, that's going on the list, yeah. Not mm-hmm. okay. Mm-hmm. Not okay. They, oh, the, <laughs> sorry. I know this is so off topic, but all, like, 99, whatever percent of the, the scriptural movies that they make, it's white people in brown face. Like, that's, mm-hmm. and you see that it's brown face because you know the actors from other movies where they're white and delights them. But, like, the brown face is shiny. Like, they didn't bother, yeah. like, putting a little <laughs> bit of powder to make them look less, yeah. No, I guess they're like, you know, you know what? This this worked for the fucking Mountain Meadow Massacre. We might there as you well go. stick with it. <laughs> it's, uh, they are all interchangeable. Like, sometimes you'll see the guy that plays Lucifer in the temple video and you're like, why is he a farmer <laughs> in this movie? <laughs> the fuck? Okay, hey, Lucifer. Yeah, it's awesome. Mormon actors are interchangeable. So, boy, aren't they? So, so now, but in this scene, Mark is calling in. So now, Mark, we haven't mentioned this yet, is trying to talk Charlie into marrying him, right? She, since the very t- first time we saw him, he's like, hey, you, we should really get married. We've been living together for a while, and and I love you. And, and she's like, I don't know. Are you going to, like, give me my own planet after we die because I know this other guy. <laughs> all I want to do is birth spirit children for eternity. I want to have, my sister wives. have multiple sister wives in the spirit world. Yeah, for sure. I want to I want to be one of the few that actually has a vagina to have sex anymore. Did you all know that that you have to be in the 
highest, highest, toppest level of the celestial kingdom in Mormonism to have sex. Really? It's true. Oh, really? Oh. Yep. You see why they don't need a technical hell then. Yeah. Is there a lot of like um, <laughs> nope. social mobility that you can get there once... Once you're in, <laughs> no. You're in the tier. no. no. Okay, Are lower heavens visit. allowed to do hand stuff? Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, you can try. However, we actually call that a TK smoothie. So, Telestial Kingdom, which is the lower one. So your 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 parts are like smoothies now, like a like Barbie a Ken and Ken doll. Like yeah. there's just oh, nothing. Wow. There. I right. guess you could bump uglies, but I don't know. So if you it could would, still smush. Well, you could just bump. You could yeah. smush. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wonder if they take away like the joyous Levi feeling. Levi Eleven. Mm-hmm. Levi Eleven. Well, there's only one way to find. Is butt stuff ranked higher or lower though? <laughs> yeah. Right. Right. Yeah, do you have a crack? Is there? A cr- does Barbie have a crack? <laughs> I don't know. I don't huh, think that's so. A great she sort of does, but she doesn't have any holes. Everything has a crack if you bend it. Not that I know. I don't have firsthand knowledge. I'm sorry. I have to somehow veer us back onto the. Sorry, it's so good. I can't stop myself. Sorry. Go so, ahead. Speaking of fucking a Barbie doll, yeah, let's, right. get let's, let's get the Barbie let's dolls get back to ass Charlie. Crack. Yeah. So, but but basically, so Charlie's going like, you know, I don't know about this marrying thing. Do you really believe that love can last forever? Now, as a person who has asked someone to marry them in the past, the answer here is yes. <laughs> <laughs> Great belief. I know that's so insulting that she's like, "Is that all you got?" Yeah. yeah. And let's point out that when she first left for her year long date in Utah, she wasn't having problems with Mark, right? I mean, there was no. We have no indication. No. Mark no. is yeah. fantastic throughout yeah. this movie. I'm going to be mad as more and more things happen because he's just like a good partner. He's a good dude. It seems good like. Fun dude. Bad actor, yep. but good partner. Not yeah, judgmental sure. like fucking Sam. Yeah. He has a weird delivery where he's just very kind of loud and over the top about everything. <laughs> but so she. They were perfect. Yeah. Right. Ugh. Right. Yeah. So, okay, so then we get her, like, powdly fishing. <laughs> right. And at first I thought that this was somehow related to the larger story that was being told or that this was related to her conversation with Mark. But no, she's just bored because fishing sucks. <laughs> okay, this is great. <laughs> I laughed a lot because fishing during a boring relationship is oh, a goddamn God. nightmare. It's like the equivalent of like the Protestants <laughs> clicking the knives at dinner and not saying a word to each other <laughs> but, but with fishing noises. And it's uh-huh. so boring. And she's like... This fucking sucks. She stands yeah. up in the boat and she starts yelling to different boats being like, sir, are you enjoying this? Why do you people do this? <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> I'm going back to New York. Yeah. But then she gets a fish. There was so much about her that I liked until she started being all Mormon. Yeah, yeah, right, right. Well, and so throughout this movie, we should point out that because this is 2002, Sam's had this PDA, the, the personal digital assistant that was the, like the precursor to the cell phone or whatever. And it keeps beeping and it keeps annoying her. So at this point, she's like, you're so boring and buttoned down. I'm going to take your PDA and drop it into the lake, Uh you know, because destroying your property is panic and mixing. That's illegal. Yes. I would have been pissed. I did write in my notes. Okay, if you reverse the genders at this point in the movie, it's a horror movie. She learns karate in the second act and kills him in the third. You're right. 100%. 100%. Yeah. Yeah. Don't don't throw my palm pilot in the water, bitch. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, I guess that was her being wild and crazy again. Listen, had she done that while smoking a cigarette, I would have been so fucking turned on. Well, there you go. And throw (laughs) that along with. Yeah. So the next scene, he's like dove into the water after it. And he's going into a store now asking if, like, anything can be recovered from it. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> oh, and that uh, lady in there, she was probably one of my favorites, that girl that was kind of staring at him blankly about yeah, it. Yeah. Uh-huh. Let me ask my manager. <laughs> are, they, yeah. are they in a CVS? Like, where are they yeah. even shopping? They're at a CVS. And she's like, yeah, <laughs> let me go in the back and see if we can recover data from a Palm V right now with my special tools in the back of my CVS. While we're waiting, there's some really cool, cool uh, three dollars sunglasses you can check out there. Mm. Yeah, yeah, right, right, exactly. Right? I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and call the police and tell them a soaking wet guy is asking me to fix his Palm Pilot at the goddamn CVS. I'm a pharmacist, you dumbass. <laughs> there's a lot of problems with that scene. I hadn't even thought about it. Yeah, it's so stupid. Yeah. But while he's doing that. Charlie comes on the radio. What she's done is fooled the store into thinking that Sam is her lost son. So she's making (laughs) an announcement as though she was the mother and trying to talk him into being not mad at her anymore. Mm -hmm. That was weird. Joke's on you, movie. I used this for wildly different purposes than you intended. So (laughs) thank you, Eli. (laughs) Uh I'm not going to read my notes about this, but yes, I agree. (laughs) It's another one of those moments trying to show that she's wacky. 
And yeah. Like, that's okay. Yeah. No, it's like <laughs> boing should be happening mm-hmm. after every time yes, she does right. something throughout the movie. <laughs> we got to get that. Yes. So so he walks out to like go meet her by the popcorn machine and there's this moment where like he starts marching angrily towards her and the movie's trying to go like, will he punch her in the face or won't he? Right? Okay, thank <laughs> you. <laughs> it's so fucked up. And it, of course, it's a, it's a rom-com. So at the last second, he's like, I am charmed by your fucking spontaneity and will pick you up and carry you off now, right? Oh, and I don't right. care about my PDA. Anymore, <laughs> right? Consent? Who fucking cares? Now let's just drag yeah. her like a just, caveman with my yeah. with my magic underwear on and drag yeah. her. But he wouldn't. But you know what? She's in this awesome position over his shoulder. He wouldn't do anything as interesting as actually spank her. Should have. Sp- I would have spanked her. He's boring. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. Doesn't understand opportunity. It oh, Sam, not him. you're the worst. <laughs> Well, I'll tell you what, I think this was the first time I looked at the bar on the bottom of my screen to see when the next commercial was and got disappointed by how far away it was. So I feel like it's a good time for us to take a break, but we'll be back in a minute with even more of Charlie. Hello, podcast listener. I'm Eli Bosnick. I'm Heath Enright, and we are fancy people. That's right. We enjoy grapes of the vine, vases of fine flowers, and the First Leaf Wine Club. First Leaf makes it super easy to get personalized wine boxes delivered on your schedule. Boxed wine? Never. Absolutely not. No, Heath, you beautiful fool. Not boxed wine. Boxes of wine. And since you get to choose the day your shipment comes, you can go out and have all your summer fun without stressing about missing a delivery. But how will I know if the wine that First Leaf sends me is appropriately fancy for me? All you have to do is answer some quick questions about your likes and dislikes on their website, and their expert team of sommeliers will send a customized assortment of world-class wines based on your preferences. First Leaf sent us a box to try, and Anna said everything they sent us was fantastic and very fancy. But here's the best news of all. First Leaf might be fancy, but it doesn't break the bank. All the wines you get from First Leaf are less than you'd pay for them at the liquor store. That's right. To make sure you've got great wine when you want it all summer, you've got to try First Leaf. Just head over to tryfirstleaf.com slash awful to sign up and you'll get your first six hand curated bottles for just $44.95. Go to tryfirstleaf.com slash awful. That's T-R-Y-F-I-R-S-T-L-E-A-F dot com slash awful to get your first six bottles for just under $8 a bottle. Try firstleaf.com slash awful. First Leaf, the fancy that you deserve. I I didn't get to be in the fancy sketch because I'm not fancy. No, you are not. Sam, Charlie, come before me. Yes, canonically accurate Mormon space Jesus. What is it? It is time for me to once again send you from heaven to manifest an earthly family. That's right, because uh, that's what our religion believes. In, indeed it does. Uh, indeed it does. So, you guys, are uh, you ready for the, for the game plan for this one? Oh, yes. Let's hear it. All right. So, Sam, you're going to be born and raised Mormon. What are the chances? Right? But, Charlie, you'll be raised in New York City. Wow, the Big Apple. Mm-hmm. And, and, and you're going to spend the first... You know, 20 some odd years of your life is just a normal, I don't know, it's just some generic Christian. It doesn't matter. Check. Got that. Oh, and, and by the way, you're going to meet this guy, Mark, and he is going to positively rail you uh, for like five years. Uh, okay. Um, so just when is, when is she going to so, be? So, I'm sorry. Bit, I, I, I wasn't, what? I wasn't okay. finished. Let me finish. Sorry. Yep. I'm talking rail. You know, look, he's going to like, he's going to be pretty into rope stuff. So, you know, just stretch those shoulders, you know. You got to stretch before rope stuff. Yeah. Sorry, just when will she meet me, uh, her space husband, I would like to know. Right, yeah. So about five years after Mark first starts the railing, uh, she'll meet you and then you guys will get married. Uh, okay, okay. And we'll live happily ever after? Uh, yeah, for, yeah, for like a year. For like a year? Yeah, why just a year? Oh, right. Yeah, because um, on this trip, I'm going to give you the big C. Charlie, sorry. <laughs> what can I say? We just, we love having Charlie around. I need my code names partner. Oh, space Jesus. You. Okay, well, when will I die? 
I don't, I don't know, probably 76 or what. I didn't check. I don't know. Oh, okay. Um, hey, Space Jesus. Yeah, Sam, what's up? Do you like hanging out with me? Like you enjoy that, right? Oh, <laughs> yeah, totally, man. For, for sure. For sure. Yeah. Okay. Well, how come I, I never die young and hang out up, up here while, while Charlie waits? Uh, that, uh, is because, uh, oh, you know, you know what? I'm sorry. I, I actually got, I have got to get some of these starving kid prayers, but I'm going to circle back to you with an answer on that one. Okay, buddy. Bye. Uh, okay. Oh, dude, he's totally ducking you. Right? He hates starving kid prayers. I know that. He hates it. <laughs> <laughs> he does. And we're back for more of this shit. We're going to rejoin the action with Charlie trying to figure out what she should paint and noticing a Jesus pamphlet in the corner. Oh, <gasps> right. <laughs> Fuck. It gets you every time. Every yeah. time. <laughs> Is this when she goes to the art gallery? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah, she goes, to the, the, she walks in and they're like, welcome to the Museum of Fine Art. And I'm like, wow, weird that you didn't name it. <laughs> right? <laughs> the, it's the it's museum. It's like when in movies, when they go into a restaurant or a, a, they go up to a bar and they just order a beer. Yeah, I right. Yeah. so much. I get mad every time. <laughs> <laughs> the fuck? But this is actually the Hope Gallery and Museum of Fine Art. It is the Mormon attempt to have a museum. And if you are ever in Utah, don't. You should absolutely go there because it's like if an entire museum was Thomas Kincaid paintings. It's oh, my God. It's so true. Yeah. It's one of those really classy museums that sells all the stuff they have. Apparently. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. I bet it's Thomas Kincaid. I bet it's that guy and James Christensen. He's the only other famous Mormon artist. Oh, and Greg Olson. They will all be those three. That's all they have. All right. Everyone needs it. Everyone <laughs> wants not the, it. Not the tight end, I'm assuming. Yeah, no. <laughs> so, and, and then, like, just as I'm writing in, in my notes, wow, this art isn't all that fine. She wanders into this giant room of Jesus paintings. I know. Cue the heart cell music. <laughs> Boom. Perfect timing. Yes. For so long, too. It went this, on for so long. We watch long. people look at art for so <laughs> long. Like, I thought, like, it was going to turn into us watching us watching us watch the movie, watch the people watch the art. It was so It's long. like my, my kids watching someone watching someone watching someone play Fortnite. It's yes. the same fucking <laughs> right. thing, but with heart cell. Right, right. No, she, it goes on so long, the museum closes around her. I'm like, God, it's like Heath at a bar. <laughs> yeah. Also, yeah. I have to point out, time. Yeah. I also have to point out, this is a real room in the Hope Gallery and Museum of uh -huh. Fine Art. Oh, sure. First of all, there is a giant warning on the door for nudity in some of the classical paintings. <laughs> oh my God, are you kidding me? You're not. Of course you're not. And as Heath teased earlier, underneath all of the informational plaques for this classic art is the price the for price. the print you're looking at. Oh <laughs> yes. my God. <laughs> Payable to the... Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Oh, right. oh, God. <laughs> oh, and then there's this great moment. The security guard comes up to her. She's just staring, just transfixed at these Jesus paintings. The security guard comes up and is like, oh, well, I, we're closing up. You'll need to leave. And then he sees that, like, you know, she's having a moment of inspiration with our Lord and Savior. And he's like, uh -huh. you know, we'll stay open just a little longer just for you. And I'm like, wow, it is like Heath at a bar. <laughs> <laughs> Listen. I find God at four in the morning after I've had a bunch of whiskey. That's how it works for me. At the bottom of a glass. They're like, we can, there. we can see you're not entirely shit-faced. You can stay a little longer. Just right, like, right. We can yeah. see you're not yeah. entirely convinced of the cult. Well, it is just like me at a bar. <laughs> it's exactly like you. Isn't she kind of praying in that moment? Do, I guess. Do you get that feeling? I guess. It's just like me at a bar. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, is your heart saying things? Yeah, right. the bar as well. His heart does say stuff Listen, if you let him drink. You don't want me to tell you what it says. <laughs> you don't want him to say nope. what it says. Oh, shit. That's how you get kicked out of a bar. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Mm -hmm. I, can I just say this too? Like, what an awesome plan to then steal the fucking art. Because no one's in there. <laughs> oh, the guard yeah. is like, ah, she's going to stay and gain a testimony. I'm going to go take a shit in the crapper. I would be grabbing paintings and running. Not that anyone wants to ever buy them, but... Right, yeah, keep the purse, bitch. And then, yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now I have a plan for when I go to the... Hope yeah, there you go. Museum, yeah. But these ridiculous jackasses are so bad at filmmaking that the next scene here, 
she actually is giving herself a long, hard look in the mirror. That's right. right? Like, we, we actually watched that happen. I'm pretty sure the heart cell did not stop. Like there no. was no, it just kept on. It honestly pretty much keeps going from here on out. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. No, the, the the heart sale salesman got him on like a wholesale plan or like a subscription oh, yeah, package sure. or something. Yeah. And they had to just use it. We will give you 97 minutes of this shit for $100. Yeah, like a right, New York City right. taxi driver just driving you in circles around the George Washington <laughs> Bridge. Yep, almost <laughs> there. It's like one more round on the carousel or one more round on the Ferris wheel. Yeah. Yeah, right, right. Yep. <laughs> I love how the writers just put this in, though. She has to take a literal, hard, long look at herself in the mirror <laughs> yes. for the audience to understand what's oh, happening. Oh, <laughs> I see. <laughs> yeah. And then we watch her play in the fucking sink for a bit. Yeah. Like, in case <laughs> oh, you yeah. were in danger of taking that scene seriously, she does like a, who am I mirror look? And then she's like, Water. Splishy splash. Splishy splash splash splash. Well, you know what that means. Yeah, Mary, tell them because we we get this it's, shit. It's a uh, foreshadowing for her future baptism yes. scene. Boom. Yo. Oh, oh you guys got yeah. that. Thank you. Thank That's you. That's just got good that writing. So. Yeah, right. <laughs> <Great movie. laughs> Clearly. Well, and then we cut from there to that. She's back on the boat fishing with Sam, which means that sh they went out fishing. Again. She had a terrible <laughs> time and was bored with every second of it. And he took her back for more. What an asshole. Charlie can do so. Charlie's an asshole and she can do so much better than him. Because Sam wanted to go fishing and fuck what the girl wants. Yep. I want to go fishing. Yep. Uh, that again. Exactly. Mormon man. Not all Mormon men, but such a true thing. Yeah. Yeah. And they have the horrible, you know, pause of silence where they have nothing to say to each other. And finally he's <laughs> like, so you Mormon yet? Huh? Yeah, right, right. <laughs> yeah. Again, again, boundaries. He has hit this Mormon thing with her so many times. She said, "I don't believe it. I don't want to talk about it. I think it's stupid." And he just keeps going and go. There is no, no means no in Mormonism. No, because you're like God wants me to convert this person. So even though they say no, ah, they don't really mean no. no means mo. We'll see more of that at the end of the movie. But go ahead. Oh yeah. Yeah, she, yeah, because this is where she goes, well, you know, I read the Book of Mormon and he mm -hmm. blows his fucking load mid-cast, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she could have said, I won $12 million, let's run away. He wouldn't so, have cared. Nope. I had to write down this line verbatim. She says, <laughs> Sam, when I read that book, I feel something. I'm praying and someone's listening. <laughs> yes. God. Yeah, well, she says, I feel something. I'm just like, oh, wow, sensation continued to exist while you were reading that. That's the nicest, <laughs> honest thing you can say about the Book of Mormon. But then right? she, yeah. Yeah, she keeps going. <laughs> okay, but her build up to this, I actually kind of enjoyed. Because she's like, no, I'm not Mormon yet. I read the book, though. And then she's like, okay, so I'm from New York. It's there's better stuff there. Utah's bad and New York's good. I like it. <laughs> right. I'm much smarter than you are. You're kind of dumb. And he's like, what are you saying? <laughs> she's like, okay, okay, it's weird. You weren't taking any hints. But but then she gives it up and she's like, well, yeah, I'm a New York intellectual. I'm extremely intelligent, but the Book of Mormon is clearly right. And then he comes again. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Right. Yeah. Oh I so must, yeah. Her whole like, I'm from New York. We have science there. But, but, but. <laughs> yeah. This is not. Despite all that. Yeah, this is not uncommon. Mormon. There was a time when I was in church and this girl who was investigating the church, she bears her testimony after she gets baptized. And she's like, it doesn't make sense. I wasn't. I never lived in Utah. I'm a liberal. I'm a feminist. But I know the Book of Mormon is true. What <laughs> right. the fuck? Yeah. Ooh. Come sit down. That does bring up an opportunity, though. Could you give your testimony, say a bunch of true things at a Mormon church, and just never deliver the money shot? Just be like, <laughs> it doesn't make sense. I'm a liberal. I'm a feminist. Here's a series of contradictions that happen in the Book of Mormon. Everyone's just like, ah, uh, ah. Uh. Here's like, Joseph Smith's right, arrest bye, record. everybody. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, people have done that, and they get the mic fucking pulled. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, Mormon blue balls. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then after they get the person off the stand, the bishop has to get up and be like, we'd like to bear my testimony, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, that motherfucking testimony didn't fucking count over there. Yeah. Ha <laughs> ha, that's, fuck, we got tricked again. Yeah. <laughs> Kezedick. <laughs> suck my milk, Kezedick. Okay. For real. I'm going to grow a dick for them to suck right now. <laughs> <laughs> Done. <laughs> Too late. <laughs> So the next day we, we get Charlie happening upon grandma playing solitaire, which I guess is also like grandma, like 
descending into sinning. her sinful yeah. ways. <laughs> sinning. It's the, it's the devil's game. Next, she's going to be sipping on a beer at 4 a.m. Yeah. at the slots. I mean, <laughs> it's a slippery slope. Yeah, no, it is. She's like, oh, you looked to, to be doing really good at solitaire. She's like, I'm cheating. And I had this like moment of like, is cheating at solitaire a Mormon euphemism for masturbation or is she just cheating <laughs> at solitaire? But, but she was just cheating at solitaire. Uh-huh, uh-huh. That's funny. I didn't pick up on that, but that is great. I think I was too focused on that they were they were showing the sin. Again, the sin, I mean, at least have have grandma be hot grandma and be cheating at solitaire and smoking a cigarette. I'm just yes. going to keep going back to that. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but you know what? I was just like, you know, I see I see your your thought about what is serious and what the movie thinks is funny, right? So I the same thing. I had the same darn question. It's like, are they trying to be cute like what is their motivation with some of this stuff like the grandma right well yeah like, the bad like grandma? i'm cheating at solitaire yeah like how are we supposed to feel about grandma yeah yeah <laughs> right. she's supposed to be kind of like the funny insert but she's the What's only reason point, though i'm cheating at solitaire are we supposed to learn a life lesson somehow she's like the like the funny wacky grandma oh grandma cheating at solitaire she's kind of a yoda character but she's like a <laughs> yeah, but an evil, like yeah. yoda of the wrong religion so right, like it's, right, kind of, yeah, yeah. it's like a sith movie being like but yoda <laughs> is pretty cool and they accidentally have to admit that it's kind of yeah. fun yeah that's true <laughs> Because she she's the voice of like, we don't judge others, right? right? Yeah. Yes, but it's still all stupid anyway. Right. So, but Charlie gets baptized. She's going to be a Mormon. Ugh. She's, then we get the, like the post baptism moment, right? Where she's like, I've never felt like this. And I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Well, not since she met Sam. Right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> So they they hit that baptism scene so hard and so fast. It was out of the blue. She's getting baptized. And Mary and I were like, no. (laughs) Yeah, right, right. It wasn't too late to save you, Charlie. (laughs) I know. And when they're having this conversation at this point in the movie, we all knew that they're in the room with homoerotic space Jesus. Yes, so my 100%. notes are, fucking show us homoerotic space Jesus. You fucking show me homoerotic space. And they, they, they go do. to they the do. wide shot and we they see it. And I, I never yeah. remember how homoerotic homoerotic space Jesus is in this in this room. Joel Schumacher would look at homoerotic space Jesus and be like, little much, guys. Little much. <laughs> what, do we, what do we call him, Shall Mary? Call Calls him like white buff CrossFit Jesus. Yeah, okay, yeah, sure. yeah, 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 totally. yeah, yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so as white as you can get, and I'm thinking it's very accurate because Jesus had all the time in the world to like lift massive weights and get pecs bigger yeah. than my head. He's on his own planet. He's got nothing else to do. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He's like, I could have three nipples. I can do what I want. Fuck yeah. Interestingly enough, like CrossFit Jesus is. so so dressed like a slut in it. That's true, yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. In any of his statues, but you know, if I were to show my shoulder where Jesus is yeah. showing his fucking nipples, then I'm a whore. Yeah. Well, I, I do think that's kind of interesting that Jesus is wearing next to nothing when some religions do depict Jesus in like a full robe, but for some reason, this Mormon buff Jesus. Is yeah wearing barely anything. They barely wonder why there's toga. They wonder why there's so many gay Mormon and ex Mormon men. Like I would, <laughs> if I was a man, I would be. Oh, gay. you can see it. We got taken on a tour to this room by some friends, <laughs> and this room is nothing but completely blinded old people being like, "Yes, a nice statue of Jesus," <laughs> right. and gay young men being like. I don't know why I keep coming back here. <laughs> and then I us know. walking in and being like, is that fucking Giga Chad? What is happening? Yeah, right. right. <laughs> <laughs> it's so weird. And all the planets surrounding it too. Yeah, you're right on. I'm remembering being there. Like, Yeah, well, it, what's amazing to me is that like we all thought at first like they're they're disguising where they are because they're embarrassed by how ridiculous this presentation <laughs> is. But no, they were waiting. That was a reveal, right? They back up and they're like, huh? Now, now how reverent do you feel? Yeah. They're with space Jesus. <laughs> space Jesus. <laughs> and his nipples are everywhere. Yeah. yeah. I like how they end the scene too, where she's like, she just got baptized, right? Now they're mm-hmm. at this spot in, in Temple Square area. And she's like, hey, Sam, just to be clear, I have like a clean slate, right? Like, clean <laughs> slate. Yep. And he's like, yeah, but now, now I kind of want to cut. Yeah, <laughs> yep. right. No answers. So meanwhile, speaking of which, 
We cut to Mark, her boyfriend back in New York. He's getting home and he's checking his answering machine. And I thought to myself, man, the death of the answering machine was a hard time for mediocre screenwriters, was it not? <laughs> for sure. It hasn't died yet. And no, no, keep, keep it alive and well. And he, and he wasn't even like frantic, like, oh my God, is Charlie dead? He's just like, do, do, do. Yeah. Uh-huh. Check my messages. Yeah. Yeah, so he checks his messages. He's got a few messages from Charlie, and then he's got one from her dad saying, hey, she's met some other guy in the year plus that she's been gone that this movie seems to think was two weeks. You need to get out here and win her heart back because as much as I hate you, this motherfucker's a goddamn Mormon. I know, I love I'm, that. I'm with him on that. Yeah, That's right. Real. Also, I just have to point out again how sloppy the writing of this movie is, right? All we need is the dad's voicemail. We listened to four yep. unrelated voicemails before we get the informational <laughs> dump we need for the film. It's so true. Including one that we heard her leave, right? <laughs> yeah. I thought we were going to get that spammy one like, hey, it's Greg. Uh, looking at your Dunning-Kruger score here, I see you're available <laughs> to get free money from the government. Uh, <laughs> your car warranty's expired. Like, there should be some good shit. At yeah. the end of the movie, Mary was like, we could have done this in like 12 minutes. Uh -huh. Right. Sure. Sure. Yep. Yeah. Mark has to flip the tape over. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> it's, I've, I've run out. I've oh, run out. Oh, God. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So then we check back in with Sam and Charlie on a swing and we get Eli's best worst. This is the our lips technically touched and that's all it says we have to do on the contract kiss. Oh, God. When I have to kiss my, my full blood sibling. That yes. Kiss? It's yeah. such a bad. So it's bad emotionally for sure. Just bad acting of a kiss. But it's also bad like geometrically like as a sports act <laughs> yeah, <'cause right>? he <laughs> misses mm -hmm. by a good amount. And she's you could see the actress be like, dude, you're. You're kissing too high. You're, you're on you're my way nose. Up there. You're around she's my nose. She's trying to follow him up. Fucking bring it in, man. And like, yeah. and she's tucking it up to try to like help him. <laughs> he won't get there. This might have been his actual first kiss ever. Like, <laughs> yeah, no, very, very possible. Possible. real possible. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so. no, no, no. They they cut to a scene they shot earlier of him making out with the statue of space, buff space. <laughs> oh, Jesus. right, right. That's, <laughs> that, that's Much hot. more passionate. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know when you don't like a food and you're like, oh, I don't I don't actually like grapefruit. And someone's like, no, you've never had my grapefruit. Oh, yeah. You've right. got to try this. Uh -huh. That's how they kiss. Like yep. you <laughs> taking that polite bite of grapefruit. Like, oh, yep. Nope. Still don't like it. I know how this food tastes. And she still <laughs> wants to be with with him and uh, my own foreshadowing, he's about to insult her and she still sticks around. Yeah. I still can't find one thing that I would even like about this guy as like a friend or a next door neighbor. Nope. Like there's nothing there. Nope. He Horrible. can't even fucking cook. No. And Mark's nope. amazing. Mark's awesome. Yep. He's I cool know. Guy. Cool guy. Interesting stuff going on in New York. He's probably going to like good galleries that don't yeah. suck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's I, not judging the shit out I'm of her. I'm not like, sure we'll where he got that ridiculous looking pizza at the end. I kind of want it. Yeah, right. no. Oh, the, the pizza. The pizza it's incredible. Yeah. <laughs> Pinning that. So, yeah. So now we, we cut to the big art gala that this, uh, this, this has been teased over and over again. Grandma's got a big art gala coming up. So, and then some of the laziest writing in this entire movie at the fucking gala in Salt Lake City, she runs into a friend from Manhattan. <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> how, like, what the fuck? Forgot and, about that. You know, how are they somehow comparing, like, like Utah, the art and culture? Like, somehow it's great. <laughs> yeah, whoops. And Manhattan is, like, coming no. over. What the fuck? It's so silly. It's like, oh, Mitzi's here. Look at it. Mitzi. And Mitzi's like, I came out. It's the hot Utah art scene, just like uh -huh. in yes, New York. I figured right. you were doing something here. I had to be here. Okay. Oh. Right. She says... She says, I'm here for work. And I would have given all the money in the world to be like, really? What are you doing in the state of Utah for work? <laughs> in your art maybe, business. Maybe she's yes. working I'm, for Sam's dad's boss. I mean, I'm not convinced. <laughs> I'm not convinced anyone in this movie actually has a job. No, yeah, that's true. Don't. That's fair. No. <laughs> Except for cheating at solitaire and that kicks ass. <laughs> the sex act. <laughs> So and then there's this amazing moment, right, where where Sam comes up and she's with her her friend from Manhattan, and her friend from Manhattan is like, "So are you still letting uh, Mark put his his penis in your vagina on a regular basis, <laughs> as you are so want to do?" <laughs> you know, I love a friend who will just like put me like that on the spot, and I love <laughs> Sam's like horrified, confused. Uh -huh. He's just such a fucking like how a, did like he a not pansy. think about that though? Right, like this is the first time it's. 
So she and said him. I was almost engaged. Time flies when you're doing montages. It's hard to keep track of everything <laughs> in your life. It just it's snap, snap, snap. When you're on a Ferris wheel for two years straight, yeah. no one's having yeah, sex. Yeah, right, right. I yeah, mean. exactly. <laughs> so, yeah. It, and so the friend walks off and she's he's like, wait a minute. You were living with another man? And she says, I mm -hmm. told you we were practically engaged. What did you think that meant? And he's like, you know, like sharing the same milkshakes. You know, I, <laughs> so, whatever. Right. And and of course, and, and, and it's a Mormon movie. So he's like, she's like, how could you not? Well, of course you wouldn't know that. No, there's no of course here. You're a grown ass man. You're supposed to know how sex works. What the fuck yes. are you talking about? Also, it's 2000 fucking two. This like and Christians movie do this all the time where they're like, ah, yes, a very real problem we all share. And it's like, my guy, you live in modernity. You ride escalators. There's no way you didn't know what was going on with her and her. But he's like, are you owned elsewhere in 2002? <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah. Exactly. Oh, God. That's funny. Charlie basically asks him, wait, this isn't what the movie's about now, is it? And he's like, no, yeah. believe it or not, this is going to be what the movie's about for a second. Is uh, <laughs> For just a quick second. We'll get through yeah, it. Yeah. Your sullied words. vagina. Yes. Your used <laughs> bubblegum nature. Yeah. So and then Mark shows up and he's like, you know, I'm just I, I guess the script already made this point, but I'm going to emphasize it. I used to put my penis inside yeah. her <laughs> vagina. So weird. Yeah, we have bone. Now start thinking about it, Sam. Just think about it. Think about it. Think about it. Uh, right? right, right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and Charlie's parents show up with Mark at this moment. Yes. As right. if they're uh -huh. like in Mark's dojo and they're like <laughs> snapping behind him like the sharks in the jet. It's so weird. The I know planet. they didn't even like him. That guy fucked my daughter. Just saying. That guy yeah, fucked my daughter. This guy right here. His yeah. penis. Bad vagina. So random. <laughs> Very that, I can attest. That I think I about attest. it is a little weird. Like they're, you know, they're probably like, okay, Mark. You need to go in there. You need to make a comment about how you bone Charlie. Get <laughs> yes, in front of Sam. Right. They'll break up. Yeah. You should and come back you, to New York. You sweep the leg and you win. <laughs> sweep the leg. Also, why is it that they've chosen to shoot Sam in like Nosferatu half shadow through this entire <laughs> scene, right? <laughs> he's so yes. hurt. Everyone's in an art gallery and he's in a fucking dungeon. Yep. <laughs> in a dungeon wearing like a tuxedo. Yes. The fuck. Yes. Yeah. But his, his being horrified that she had had she had done the do before, good stuff. Did they and that's, not yeah. talk about? I mean, they had like a two year montage where yes. the leaves were changing. No, Didn't they, they have enough they, time. No, they prayed and read scripture. <laughs> they Fuck must have. Mary. Yeah. They went fishing at least twice. They could have had that conversation. Yeah, right. There, there you go. Let's all describe silences. the orgasms we've had while fishing because this is fucking boring otherwise. Perfect. Sam's like, wet dreams only. Sorry. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> and I'm ashamed of it. And yeah, I'm right, right. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Is it the Jesus statue? So yeah. <laughs> totally. <laughs> <is that laughs> <one>? <laughs> Gets you every time. So, yeah. So, Sam sulks away. She, she follows him and he turns to her. He goes, how could you do this to me? Oh, right, right, right. <laughs> Her having had sex with a man before she met him, before uh -huh, she met yep, Sam, uh -huh. was something she did to Sam. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And also, dude, Sam, seriously, you can't imagine non-monogamy at all here in Utah. You've never heard of that. <laughs> this is new to you. Mm -hmm. Conceptually, right? multiple on. lovers. I feel like you're familiar with the idea. How naive do you have to be that your like hot, sinful, sexy New York City girlfriend has is a virgin? Like what? What? Right. What? <laughs> why do you think that? Yes. Ever. It, it for me, I would think that if she was a virgin, there's something wrong with her. <laughs> yeah. Like, right. like, is it sewn shut? Are you secretly gay? <laughs> like, what is this? Because you would have had sex. Right. So he's horrible, but okay, if you were to, if you had to say the things in his head now, what phrasing would you use to describe her now that you found out she has a sexual history? Oh, chew, chewed bubble gum? No, mm. that would be too licked, offensive. The, licked cupcake. It could be the licked cupcake. The cracked that's, iPad screen. Oh, no, that's, one, that's huh? actually, that's that's too complimentary. How about that's just fixable. True. Used merchandise, Heath. <laughs> How about how? Oh, yeah. That's the actual Jeez. answer in the movie. Uh, uh, yeah, it really is. I wish you just said merch. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Used merch. Used merch. Uh, <laughs> she goes, What do you want? And he goes, I don't know, but not 
used merchandise. <laughs> Fucking gross. And then walks off. <laughs> the fuck? So this might seem like, this, like, ah, that never happened. It fucking oh, happens. I'm sure. yeah. I, in my own case, and in so many cases, because I was not a virgin when I got married. What? I know How we could great. you do that to me? I'm going to knock on you so <laughs> you hard. Don't want, you don't want you to merchandise. And that there was a time when me and my husband, we got married anyways, even though I guess I was a whore. And we went to get ice cream somewhere, and there was a guy working behind the counter that I had dated before. We had been involved in some heavy petting. Okay. <laughs> Um, me and the, and the register guy. And Shoping? then my my husband at the time ignored me and was pissed for the rest of oh, probably Jesus two days fucking. because he couldn't get it out of my his mind that there was heavy petting between me and Kyle or whatever the fuck his name was. And then it became like, I saved myself and you didn't. And and mm-hmm. all this. Like, so this, is, this scene in Charlie, not fake, happens way yeah. too often and it's a bunch of bullshit. <sighs> was your ex-husband's name Sam? Could have been. <laughs> it might as well have been. Jesus. They're all called Kyle. Yeah. I don't fucking remember. Whatever. <laughs> yeah, whatever. We're exes for it's a reason. It's just a number. Yeah. <laughs> a lipstick notch on my lipstick case. <laughs> <laughs> so Sam goes home. We get a shot of him playing basketball by himself. And no, that's not a euphemism for cheating at solitaire. He's actually just <laughs> playing basketball. <laughs> and he didn't get any better. Can we just no, tell you? No, like, he had a year to practice. Yeah. <laughs> Well, luckily, in this moment, he's supposed to be missing so they can get it all in a single shot. Right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, right. Kind of way. <laughs> yeah. So in that sense, he actually did get better. Like he misses for real without cuts, which <laughs> yeah, they were not right. able to do earlier. So, OK. I'm thinking that they had a Sam double. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh right. it's definitely right. a double. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. Sam's not going to get better. Stupid. Yeah. yeah. Yep. I didn't yep. realize. Yeah. Pay attention, guys. So yeah. mom's like mom comes out <laughs> and, and she's like hey, you know, what are you doing out here playing basketball all mopey at, in the middle of the night? And he's like, it turns out that Charlie's not a virgin. Uh-huh. God. Charlie's vagina is not in mint condition. It is uncollectible. <laughs> and now I don't know what to do. I'm gonna, It's I'm already gonna, out of the package. I'm going to be able to God. tell. How would you? Well, A, you can't. But no. B, your dick has never been anywhere but maybe your hand. How would you be able to <laughs> right, know right. Like, you the don't difference know what between vaginas? To, yes, exactly. <laughs> I can't get it out of my mind. God, well, then you're gross. You're going to have about four seconds to evaluate this when it happens. So just relax. <laughs> yeah, right. <man. laughs> if that, like, for real, if you can even get to the point of insertion and having not blown your wad. Let me point out, too, I am convinced that the mom, Sam's mom, with her plaid, like, uh, vest, she's so damn gay. Just that out there. Okay. I think Shelly had a thing for the mom in this movie. If she could have had Sam's less mom. Mormon hair, I'd be all about that. Bitch. <laughs> Support. Two votes. <laughs> and she's so, but like she's, she's trying to defend Charlie. She's like, yeah, but Charlie wasn't Mormon. And, and like, you know, Baptist, they don't know you're not supposed to just fuck everybody. You know how Baptists right? are. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And he's like, but I can't forgive her for being unfaithful. But like, for mm-hmm. being pre unfaithful to pre unfaithful. Yes, seriously. <laughs> Unfa- he says the word unfaithful. Yes. I, I wrote in my notes to the future. Look, yes. <laughs> this is episode 413 of this podcast. It's fucking hard to surprise Chaboy at this point. But when he said unfaithful, I was like, this requires time traveling amounts of yes. stupidity. <laughs> she cheated on eventual me, is actually <laughs> said as a real thing. That's the plot of the movie now. Yes. And then mom has to walk him through the concept of uh-huh, time. Uh-huh. <laughs> Again, guys, you can't make this up because this shit is real. These things are actually said. And, and you're taught like growing up when you're, you know, an innocent 12-year-old girl in the church and you're already getting counseled on how to behave. You need to be faithful to your future husband. That's why we don't go out and mess around. Yes, so it's a yeah, so they're wow. teaching you about the, the future way back then. Mm-hmm. But my favorite part of this entire scene is what mom says to her son, Sam. She says, oh, your right. whole life, we taught you that intimacy should be connected to eternal commitment. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when, she choked on her words. That lesbian that was like, I don't want to start. Say this. Like, how old do you have to be to hear that line? Yeah, like, right. Five? Three. Right. <laughs> <laughs> But eventually he realizes he was wrong. He runs back to the art gallery to apologize, but it's too late. She's not only left the art gallery, but the state of fucking Utah. I would have too. 
Well, yeah, no, that's fair. Yeah. I don't think I got out that evening, but... That's true. I do want to point out that I know other movies do this, but I feel like if you have one fight, and to be fair, this is a pretty bad fight, but if you have one fight and then you immediately exit the state... Really in it to win it. Yeah, you know what I'm no, saying? that's fair. Good that's point. Fair. Maybe she finally had the fucking brain to go back over the entire one year date over many seasons. Yeah. And see how much of a dick he was. But I think the selling point, she went back and thought about that kiss and she was like, fuck this. I am so out. <laughs> Hello, New York. For real. I, that's, yes. So, but he follows, right? We, we, he goes to New York. So we get to see the big city through the eyes of a Mormon filmmaker that's terrified of black people. <laughs> oh, yeah, we do. I was like, do not follow her back to New York. Literally smash cut to the plane taking off as if in response to my notes. And then they arrive in New York City. Yeah. And so they're doing the the, the Crocodile Dundee thing. Like, this is the New York yeah, part totally. of the movie where, like, you that guy knife. doesn't know how <laughs> doormen work in New York City. That's crazy. The doormen, the doormen that are clearly in magic underwear, by the way. The doorman was definitely Mormon. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. But not the black guy. Make sure we yeah, keep not that. The definitely yeah, definitely not. How well, do we yeah. use these doors? We don't have doors in Utah. All we have is wagon wheels. Like, what the? Well, and they have this stupid fucking moment, right, where the doorman's like, hey, I can't let you up unless, like, you know, I can call her and ask if it's okay for you to come up. And he's like, oh, God, don't do that. Right? And the doorman's like, please leave. And so he leaves. But then he sneaks around. You know how the New York apartments have the back door in the alley? Mm-hmm. Heath, you know how the alleys in New York have back doors? Yep. So you go, he goes around to the back door and sneaks into the apartment. A lot of people don't know about that. So now he's, he's not breaking and entering, but he's also not like supposed to be there at this point. He's definitely entering. Uh, yeah, true. Yeah. <laughs> and so he goes upstairs to her apartment and it turns out that at just that moment, she's locked Mark out of the apartment and the two of them are having a yelly fight through the door. So their neighbors <laughs> love that. <them. laughs> For sure. Yeah, neighbors needed to jump out at this point and be like, what the fuck are you all doing? Oh my <laughs> God. She said no. No right, means no. no. So like, this shit should be in a crime documentary. That's where this is headed in my mind. Right. Like if you have zero respect, she breaks up, she leaves. She goes like 2,000 miles away because she hates you. And you show up in stinky clothes, by the way, sneak into her apartment, bang on the door, like, right. hello, that's that's illegal. No, this needs to be like Gung Gung and Mariska Hargitay shows up and arrests yes. both of them. <laughs> right. Oh man, that would be a great movie. I'm about that. Mm-hmm. So, but she's like, she tells Mark to fuck, she opens the door, tell Mark to fuck off and then Sam's there and she's like, oh, well, you also fuck off. Just both of you fuck off. And he's like, I was wrong. And she's like, what were you wrong about? He's like, why with all the fucking questions? I don't understand why you have to ask. (laughs) Exactly. That's the best part (laughs) is this movie is really stuck on like, they can't just be like, hey, Sam, you're an idiot. Virginity doesn't matter. But Mm -hmm. he is allowed to be sorry for being so mean about it. So a couple (laughs) of times in this resolution makeup scene, she'll be like, right, so what did you do wrong? And he's like, I (laughs) spoke Harshly. Yes, <laughs> right, right. Okay. My favorite part on top of this, though, is that Mark is basically checked out of the relationship at this point. Oh my too. God, so Mark's the fucking He, he kind of gave up I and he's him. just like roasting yes. Sam as yep. Sam's yeah. trying to apologize. So Sam's saying shit. Mark's just like, ooh, swing and a miss. That was dumb. You should have right, said right. that. Yep. Yep. That didn't work. Mark literally does our job. I wrote in my notes at one point, okay, well, if Mark's going to do the podcast, then I'm going to do the movie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so good. I think, so look at this. Mark has spent all of maybe like three and a half minutes total with Sam and it's like he's going, wait, if Charlie actually likes this guy, fuck that. Yeah, like, there's right, something right. seriously wrong with her. I am out. <laughs> I'm just going to heckle Sam for a bit. Oh, Sam <laughs> says, I love you too at one point. And then there's a long pause. And Mark's <laughs> right. like, oh, did she say anything? Because I didn't hear her say That's anything. Back. Hurt. That's, oh, <laughs> That's rough. You should probably I want to be best friends with Mark. I'm not going to lie. Yeah, Mark seems like a fun time. <laughs> So then we we get like the like he's holding a vigil. Fucking Sam is just going to stand outside of her apartment now and just live on the street there until she comes outside. Like he's full stalking. He's like staring at her through the window and shit. <laughs> that's how people get murdered. That's yes. that's like the This is how John Lennon died. Yeah. It's not even the beginning of the crime. It's halfway through. Like you you are from beginning to end you're halfway to murdering her. Yes. 
So, but he steps away long enough to buy her a little Ferris wheel trinket, and just then oh, she God. leaves and gets into a cab. So we have this like you know follow that cab moment with him, <laughs> right? Right. <laughs> Forgot about that. Where he 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 stalks her to her painting class. So now he's broken into the fucking painting class and he's pestering her while she's trying to do that. God, it's terrifying. And he leads with, "I want you back, despite." Your old yeah. catcher's mitt of a vagina. That yeah, right. Now, right? <laughs> yes. I will forgive you for being a whore. Hot dogs down a hallway. Uh, right. <laughs> Wait, do we skip to the part where he walks in to this, this um, art class and there's a nude model and he... He, he freaks out. He can't, yeah. ha- he can't handle it. On a, it it's, well, so <sighs> what I love about that moment too is that like that actually has like the opportunity to be funny, right? Because he sees the nude model. He's Mormon, so he can't see the nude woman. So he looks away, but everyone's drawing the nude model. So wherever he looks, it's somebody drawing mm-hmm. the nude model. But it's a Mormon movie, so they just have like people drawing stick figures because they can't Arms. have anything. Right. Yeah, right. I want yeah. him to hold up Swiss cheese in front of his face. <laughs> <laughs> like Mormon porn. Yeah. Also, the only other Lamanite in the movie comes over and she's like, hey man, you can't be in here. And the moment that's supposed to be happening in the movie is like, oh, I didn't belong in this room. But it very much seems like he's scared of the movie's only other black person. In the <laughs> no, for sure. Way. For sure. Yes. There's the guy that worked in the hotel and he's like, I ain't going over here because he's he's black and that's scary to me. Yes. And then they have the the aggressor in, in the art studio being the one that has to throw him out. It's like, yeah. oh, the Lamanites can't deal. Yeah, he just won't take no for an answer. So she walks him to the door. She gives him this very well-reasoned Please fuck off forever. Yep. And then he does not, spoiler, does not fuck off forever. Because now we're three quarters into into murdering her. Yes. Like they, we're getting real yep. close. Yeah. Right. All right. Well, I'll tell you what. We're clearly better at taking a hint than this asshole. So we're going to leave for a bit. But first, let me give Act 3 the hard sell. Will Charlie get a restraining order? Who the fuck thinks this is romantic? What the fuck is wrong with that person? Find out the answers to different questions and more when we return for the almost wholly unrelated conclusion of Charlie. Uh, Steve, have you got a second? Sure, Julie. What's up? Well, we were just looking over your script for the movie Charlie. We had a couple questions about the second act. Sure. Yeah. What about it? So at the art gallery scene, you have in the stage directions, suddenly a magic wormhole opens and Mark steps out to mention loudly that he had sex with Julie before. Yeah. No, is that going to be a problem because of like special effects? Or? Well, we were just worried that's a little unrealistic. I see. So what do you, what do you guys suggest? Mm, ooh, what if he shows up at the museum? Well, right. But why would he do that? I don't know. Charlie's dad tells him to come and announce that Charlie's not a virgin. That's a little silly. Besides, if we don't do the reality portal, we'll have to cut the whole scene where he meets Genjar, the time slicing unicorn. Yeah, we're we're okay with that. All right. I just I'm worried that people are going to think the writing in this movie is pretty lazy, though. Mm, I think they're already. You know what? Let's just see how it plays out on screen. All right. I guess I'll call Genjar and tell him. Ah, poor Genjar. And we're back for still more of this shit. We're going to rejoin the action with Charlie getting home to a surprise candlelight dinner from her other pushy ex-boyfriend stalker (laughs) that breaks into her home, Mark. And yes, okay, Mark did break in (laughs) to the apartment also here, (laughs) which is very bad. But other than this one bad thing he's done, I think he's fantastic and clearly better, and it's ridiculous. Well, and he like he brought New York pizza and wine. Of course you like him. Yeah, well, I did, <laughs> yes. It, he, his whole thing would work on me, even without the correct type of pizza. So this was, yeah, yeah theoretically supposed to be New York pizza, but it's all wrong. Like the ratio Yeah, no, it was up. weird. It looked weird. It looked <laughs> like a fucking like pizza. pizza hut stuffed crust. It looked like it weighed about 14 pounds. Like, yeah, was, right. And for two people. The stuff, there's like a giant ring of like challah bread around the outside. It's yeah. crazy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I would love to, I would have watched just 30 minutes of them trying to eat the entire thing for like a free t-shirt. <laughs> oh, there you fuck go. Yeah. yeah, it would have been better than whatever the fuck we watched. <laughs> Were they just like, I don't know, you know, New York City, Jewish that bread, pizza, challah. There you go. Perfect. We got it. <laughs> so true. But yeah, he seems to have though, because like there's a lot of non-consensual shoulder rubbing going on here and everything. And he's, he, he sort of has this like, hey, you want to fuck and then maybe make up 
afterwards, kind of an attitude towards this whole situation. Right. But ultimately, she relents and kisses him, but she does it right in front of the window where Sam, who is still standing on the fucking <laughs> sidewalk, staring at her window <laughs> like a fucking creeper, <laughs> sees them. Three days later. Mm -hmm. Doing like the baby come back, like say anything move out there. Yes, it was yeah. Weird. <laughs> Right. This guy can't buy a hint. Seriously. No, no, no he can't. <laughs> and I, I wanted to point out that Mark kind of like the non-consensual touching of the shoulders. Mm -hmm. Like they were in a relationship. They boned like they had had yeah. sex. So it's not like some creeper coming and grabbing her tits, but they make it look like he's about to rape the woman. Like yes. that's such a horrible, horrible thing. And in my mind, you compare him like touching your shoulder, touching the shoulders of a woman that he loves, loves, and they've been together before. That compared to to Sam calling her used merchandise, night and day, oh, night, yeah. night and fucking day. Right. Or compared to the thing that Sam does immediately after, right? Because like I thought he sees her kissing him in the window and thinks, okay, well she's clearly chosen him over me. I'll leave. No, he breaks into the fucking apartment again, kicks in her door, and tells <laughs> mm -hmm. Mark to get away from her. Right. God. And this is supposed to be like like he's being chivalrous. No, yes. he's going to kill you someday. Right. <laughs> get your hands off of my property. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Terrifying. So, but at this point, like the security at her building dragged Sam screaming from the fucking <laughs> apartment he's not supposed to be in. Right. How is he not in jail? Right. And as that's happening, he screams like, I had the wrong dreams, meaning like I dreamed about the, you know, virginal Mormon woman. I should have been dreaming about you and be cool with the, the fact that you're not virginal Mormon woman. Exactly. I should right. have been dreaming of you fucking Mark. Wait, hold on. Yes. That sounds wrong. <laughs> and But then Charlie is hearing him scream, I had the wrong dreams. And she's like, hold on. Was there wisdom in the thing the guy was screaming whilst being dragged away <laughs> yes, by security? Yes. And no, never is that nope. ever whiz nope. wisdom in that situation. No. Never, never. No one yells anything that positive or good or that makes sense when they're being dragged away <laughs> from breaking and entering twice. Yes. So he breaks into the apartment and then kicks in the door and then almost starts a fight with no. Mark. Right. There's no sonnets being written while being dragged away by security, nope. bounced out of a bar, never. It's never happened. Well, but now apparently Sam was arrested for this, but don't worry, he's white, probably has good swim times or <laughs> something. Fine. So the judge dismisses the charges sure. on the condition that he leaves New York and goes the fuck back to Utah where he's normal. Right? Right. <laughs> where that shit happens every day and no one expects anything different. That's yeah. right. So yeah, so they have like a fucking sad song montage about each other where they look at Ferris wheels and he bought her a little Ferris wheel trinket and he's st he's at the Ferris wheel. And then eventually she shows up because apparently he's been holding a vigil at the Ferris wheel 24 hours a day. Is he still right. wearing the tuxedo? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking the exact same thing. It's like, how are they there at the same time? Right. Apparently he's just been because he doesn't have a fucking job, I guess. He can <laughs> just true. sit there all day. According to the movie, he bought her a physical plane ticket. Mm -hmm. Just a paper plane. Like you buy it and then it's like, you know, you could just hand it to anybody and now it's theirs because this was yeah. 2002. This is post 9-11, no. actually. That doesn't work. Not only that, but he th it's also one of those plane tickets that you could just redeem whenever you get around to it. You know, which, whichever <laughs> flight you want. <laughs> really? <laughs> Can we also point out that even that is stalking? Like that oh, gesture. Sure. Oh, here. Here's a plane ticket. Come to me then mm -hmm. since I got kicked out of the entire state of New York. Come to you. To, it's still fucking stalking and creepy. Yes. If you don't put the receipt in there for me to like return the plane <laughs> ticket, that's stalking. Yeah, yes, right. absolutely. For sure. Can I go to Cancun with that ticket instead? That'd be right. Cool. Yeah, yeah right. right. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so, to anywhere 2000 miles away. So but but no, but she comes back and then they get married and have the most underwhelming sex of Charlie's <laughs> life. I'm sure. Oh, well, it, oh, I, I wish they would have like had a sex scene there, that would have been fucking hilarious. Because because you've got to feel so sorry for her because she can't just go like, here, let me show you how this no. all works, right? Without no. him freaking the fuck out. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. No. And sex scene over. There it is. I think we might, we, we might have missed <laughs> it. Stay on your side of the sheet, damn it. <laughs> Stay on your side of the sheet. I wish that baby had popped out with a full head of wavy hair and a brown beard. Yeah, like, right, it's right. Mark. <laughs> it's Mark's baby. <laughs> 
Oh, that that would have been a good. Okay, that, yeah. that would have been good to that have twenty more minutes of the yeah, movie. Sure, sure, yeah, right. twist. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, but we fast forward long enough that they've got a fucking baby that's like three, four months old now. Mm-hmm. So they're sitting around having <laughs> having fucking funeral potatoes. Unreal. Those looked good. Those are amazing, <laughs> by the way. They're so. Have you guys not had funeral potatoes? Oh, we we did a whole skit about how awesome funeral potatoes oh, were to open good. Mormon movie month. Yeah, they're. F- Fucking amazing. I, the only thing worth it about Mormonism is the funeral potatoes. Yeah. <laughs> so then we're so so we're we cut to the next scene where like they're cleaning up after dinner or whatever. They're they're having this dialogue that is so goddamn boring that this poor actress feels the need to like start doing voices out of nowhere just to spice <laughs> shit up. That's right. Yeah. During this conversation though, she starts having mysterious I'm dying of cancer pains, right? Right. Yeah. In the back. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, back right. cancer. I was like, is she having a kidney issue? Like, what's happening? Yeah. This was almost my best worst or my favorite favorite, which is someone on the IMDb page for this movie in the goof section posted like, huh, her pancreatic cancer starts as a pain in the back, but that's not how it would work. And then someone, <laughs> I insist it was the writer of this movie, was like, actually, one of the telltale signs of pancreatic oh cancer can be pain in the back, as you'll see from these several articles called from Wikipedia. I was like, oh, oh right, shut there the we fuck go. Up. Too bad she's a woman. Well, <laughs> <laughs> but here's the fucked up thing, right? Is that she's like, oh, my back hurts really bad. And he's like, oh, do you think that's a foreshadowing thing? And she's like, no, I'm sure it'll be fine. So then he dips her, right? They start dancing and he dips her and he- I saw that too. Right, and I'm just like, she just said she had a sore muscle in her fucking back, you fucking asshole. <laughs> I, wanted to, I wanted her to be like, what the <laughs> fuck? Why would you tackle me? Ow, right. it's ruptured. She should have gone the fuck off on him. These people have boundary problems. Just so yeah, no shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, once again, the girl doesn't matter. No. So in case that wasn't boring enough for you, we next go to Mormon Church where we check in and I'm sure you're going to be able to tell me the actual name of this. I had it down as being a subservient wife class. Yes, that would be Relief <laughs> Society and that is what? absolutely, isn't the question asked like, what do you do for your husband? That's exactly what it is. Relief Society is all about how can you cook better foods for him? Oh, how can you make your kids be better for him? How can you, everything, be better for your husband? Wait, that is called Relief Society. This is re- like wifeitude, cl- Relief Society. Mm-hmm. That's real. Essentially, mm-hmm. yes, that's an actual for real thing. No, it's not every week about your husband, but it all boils down to how you should be a better Mormon woman which essentially is like, how can you be a better wife and mother? Right. It's right. all how what it is. How can you conform to gender roles? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Is there a husband class about like, you know, no. causing orgasms or whatever? Uh, <laughs> as if the woman's <laughs> orgasm matters. Yeah, right. Hoax. They have what's called their priesthood session, but they don't talk about how to be a good husband. They just like get all about the scriptures and you need yeah, to, no. you know. They learn how to ask teenagers about their masturbation habits at their priesthood class. Yeah, right, 100%. right, yeah. Cool. Mm-hmm. Yes. That's a real handy class class. <laughs> <laughs> Very good one. Oh, shit. <laughs> Let me throw some random extra out there. So they, the Relief Society class is on Sundays, but midweek they have another class because the oh, women Jesus need Christ. to learn even more. And back in the day, they called it, and not back in the day, but like I was still Mormon then, they called it um, homemaking, Wednesday night homemaking mm. class. Like you go to learn how to quilt some shit because that's what you would do. Meanwhile, the men and the boys are going rafting and fishing, but no, no, no. The women, you go to homemaking. Right. You make quilts. Jesus Mm. Christ. Oh, it's like the opposite of Girl Scouts and Boy Scouts. How like Girl Scouts teach you how to get into Harvard and Boy Scouts are like, throw a hatchet at Craig. It's the opposite because (laughs) of the sexism. I get it. All right. I get it. Oh, so so (laughs) throw a hatchet at Craig. So then we we <laughs> sometimes you do have to throw a hatchet. No, you do sometimes have, you yeah. have to throw a hatchet at Craig. They have a they have a they have a badge for that. That motherfucker's got it coming. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, Don't be gay. <laughs> Jesus Christ! <laughs> Ever. <laughs> so we cut to the hospital and or the opening credits of the old Hulk TV show, right? Where she's getting her cancer check. <laughs> yeah. Oh God! Laser yes. thing. Beep, beep. First of all, MRIs are hella noisy. Yeah. That's not realistic. No, that I mean, she has like the red dot, like dividing her into fourths and then uh, like the sound of her being put in. But yeah, they're so fucking loud. You can't film something in there. Right. Yeah. yeah. And I also say we do mean, I think my favorite character in the movie here, which is no bedside manner doctor, who's like <laughs> yes. your wife, 
is gonna die and he's like well what are the options and he's like oh no she is gonna die she <laughs> i could go in there and shoot her in the face right now and she has a higher rate of survival <laughs> than Gansen, okay? so true. he's Pancreatic such a dick Gansen. he's like no 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 she's gonna die she's dead just in your mind she's a goner just no think hope. of a gravestone <laughs> when you picture her from now well <laughs> and i i also love sam at this moment because sam keeps not getting it he's like so she has a uh, terminal cancer and he's like oh that's the end of cancer right he's like that is the end he's like right <laughs> we have to get off the train he's like what the fuck are you talking about man he's like so she's gonna have to need some chemo he's like that would be a waste of chemo I'm just I'm trying to tell you and he's like oh so she's so strong she doesn't even need chemo he's like not what I'm fucking <laughs> right. saying man right. I don't think you understand she would kill the chemo in, like the chemo <laughs> would die if we give it to, to her bring it fucking chemo I'll take you out yeah. I was in the room with her for a little bit I have cancer now that's how much <laughs> cancer it's she contagious has. we've all been dead for 30 <laughs> he's like how bad is it he's like man we are introducing a tumor 74 minutes into the movie how bad do you think it is <laughs> and and with all now with that everyone is in that room has cancer she has zero percent chance what does sam decide go ahead Oh, God's oh, heavenly father is going to going to save her. She yeah. needs a blessing. <laughs> yeah. So but Sam does a Mormonism spell where everybody has to all the named characters have to put their hands on her head or some shit and go me, 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 me. <laughs> <laughs> what is wait, wait, wait. You skipped the oil they have to put on the top of her head. Did you oh, wait, oh, you there's oil, oil up there? You have to be anointed. Now, to be fair, the movie skips the oil, too. That's true. They're no, no, no. I, I get it. I get it. The movie skipped, so you guys didn't catch it. They didn't it. have an oil budget, they turns did. out. <laughs> so it's like electrocuting somebody in the green mile. And you took <laughs> <it>. <laughs> no. Sorry, we don't have too the sponge soon. to put on your head. And, yeah, totally. So, no, no, no. So in Mormon blessings, if you're giving like a blessing of health, you have to have two people there. And one person has the oil, which you keep on a keychain because you never know when there's like a car accident and you're like, back away, oh, EMTs. Christ. You have to have your magic potion with For you. For sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So one person blesses it like, oh, I don't remember the blessing, but it's stupid. And then the other person takes it and drips it on the top of their head because now it's magical. And then they can put their hands on and give the blessing. You can't skip the oil or shit doesn't work. <laughs> shit doesn't work anyway. Yeah, but the I was going to say. Feel better. <laughs> <laughs> and this movie, can we say, oddly honest about that, right? Because right. right? he'll just spend the rest right. of the movie being like, right, but God has healing powers. And every other character is like... Yeah, Here's the thing about those, that. Yeah. Uh -huh. Right, right. Uh -huh. You remember when you asked her to pray and she said words out loud and she was kind of being a dick by doing that? <laughs> you're kind of, if you think about it, you're kind of the dick now. <laughs> a way bigger dick because now she has hope because he just fucking... Well, true. And the words that he used, it, oh, it, gives, yeah. it gives God an out. So the words are, yeah. through your faith and obedience and the faith and obedience of your family dot, 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 you will live, okay? <laughs> this is such a <laughs> fucked up Mormon thing to do because here's Isn't the sitch. When, let's say you're, you're whatever, right now in, in Sam and Charlie's life, Charlie dies. Like, just a heads up, people, Charlie dies. Spoiler and alert. In the, yeah, spoiler alert, we knew it was coming. But in real life Mormonism, when you give the blessing like that and then the person dies... You, you have one or two ways to look at it as, as a person. You can either be like, well, this was not God's will, which is also fucked up because God's like, yeah, you should die even though mm -hmm. you have a toddler. And then there's the feeling of I wasn't faithful enough. Right. That's why she died. Yes. That's, that's why the there are no yeah. fucked up in the head Mormons. They are all fucked up in the head with guilt and shame. And it was my fault. So-and-so died because I blah, blah, blah. Oh, the spell didn't work because she she used to fuck. Basically. Well, no, 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 because he had insufficient faith in the Heavenly Father or because someone else did so he could blame somebody else for her death. Yep. And and then here's another aspect of religious belief that's that that usually doesn't, it's, it's a problem that usually doesn't get highlighted as well as this movie accidentally highlights it. Because there's a point here where she's like, hey, you know, rather than cling to this delusion that God is going to miracle the cancer out of me, can we just spend the remaining time of my life being realistic with each other? And, and that way, like, I can get closure along the way. And he's like, no, no, you cannot do that. That would be giving no. up. 
And as a matter of fact, not only am I not going to let us to have, uh, have good clo- closure, I'm going to be an asshole to you. Yes. I'm going right. to be an asshole. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to punch walls. I'm going to punch stuff. walls, paint the fucking house. Like, just ignore you. Yeah. I'm pissed because you don't have the faith that I do that mm-hmm. you'll be healed. This is his pride. And again, this is not some random weird Mormon thing. This is for real how it goes down in the religion. Absolutely. Certain of it, yeah. And I should be clear. The message of the movie is not, Hey man, miracle healings don't work because at the end of her, his big hissy fit, which is literally him almost punching holes in the, in the drywall, <laughs> like a typical white boy. While his wife's almost dead. Yes. Right. On. His, his dying of wife cancer is like, okay, I'll pretend you have magic powers. And he's like, thank you. Yes. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> Apology <laughs> accepted. Right, damn right. I talk to God and I can heal people. About time, you you whorish bitch, that you realize that about me. Uh-huh. So we cut to Charlie walks in. He, she, he, uh, she sees that Sam is painting this room. They'd argued about whether it's going to be her studio or his office. And now he's making it into her studio, even though, you know, she's, going to be dead by the time he's done. <laughs> right. The emptiest possible gesture, <laughs> right? To turn the request you denied your wife in uh-huh. life into blackmail to live. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Like, <laughs> he should have made it into her fucking studio in the first place. Like, no, I'm the man. I need an office. For what? Fucker, you don't have a job. Yes, thank you. Yeah. Why do you need an office? <laughs> At least she paints. It's not great, but she paints. Yeah. Do you um? Do you want to go to brunch with your friends next week? I'm going to be dead. <laughs> Stop. You're not doing this. Yeah. Is nothing. This is, I could stay down there. And he gets mad at her now. She's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I'm dying soon. That's dumb. He gets mad and he's like, you can't give up. And he throws one little throw paintbrush paint. and he's like, that wasn't very impactful. <laughs> tray splash and he splashes the tray of paint and he's he's like fuck still kind of weak uh, Let's go and he more. tries to smash the drywall and he can't really <laughs> puncture it too much either he d- he very clearly goes for a smash a hole in the drywall and he's like ah, white guys make that seem way easier than I guess mm-hmm. it is right? <laughs> he's like not these baby soft white boy hands. It ain't happening. Yeah, no shit. It's really good sheetrock, I think. It's just because we, it was too <laughs> probably good cement, of sheetrock. Probably cement walls here in this was, house, huh? Yeah, yeah, better insulation. Mormon mm-hmm. construction. <laughs> <laughs> well, and she goes like, hey, you know, you're kind of acting like you don't believe that we live for eternity together on our own planet after oh God. I, after we die, you know, it'd be really weird for you to be this upset if you actually believed the nonsense that your church says. And he's like, uh-huh. oh, don't point that out. That <laughs> fucks up my whole thing. No. Damn it. Uh-huh. Okay. Let me be mad. Can, can we pause? What you just said is the fucking point of the whole fucking movie. Yep. Yes. <laughs> that is it. It took how long? To get to the point, which is families are forever. They could just say yep. that at the beginning. Just say it. it would have taken five oh, minutes. Just show that stupid cross stitch plaque. Goddamn minutes from us. Yeah, that live, <laughs> laugh, know. love plaque. Yeah. Oh, God. So, yeah, so he violently trashes the room while yelling at her for being mortal. <laughs> <laughs> How dare you get cancer? Uh-huh. Yeah, right. Make your death all about you again. Oh, <laughs> God. Is it too much to ask that the laws of physics be defied for my sake? Uh-huh. Jesus. I only got to fuck you for a year. And this, yeah. this is what you give me back? <laughs> yeah. You're doing this on purpose. Because <laughs> you are a whore. <laughs> this all boils down. Is this because my tongue gets sore real fast? Because I can work on the, they said you could get those jaw <laughs> trainers on TikTok and that'll help. So, there is no way that Sam ever went down on no, anybody. No, no way. No fucking None way. Scenario. No. And there's no way that Mark, Mark didn't. Did. Yes. Oh, hell yeah. Mark, Mark did. Oh, Mark ate ass. Mark Let's was dead. Yes. Yes. If all. you take one thing away from our seven and a half hour review of this <laughs> Mark <laughs> 40 minute ass. movie, it is that Mark fucking mm-hmm. dipped a chip in that ass. You yes. know what I'm saying? Yes. <laughs> oh, God. Ruffles have ridges. I love it. <laughs> I think Charlie, I'm pretty sure Charlie only went down on the pizza. Yeah, sure. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> So then there's this weird moment where the movie like feigns something happening, right? Because Sam pulls up at his house and there's a cop car there and the cop is running into his house and he's like, oh, something must be going on. We never go back to that. Like we, we never explained. I guess the cop was just late for the barbecue, and, and he was late for the barbecue. Was just at the party and parks however the fuck he feels like. Yeah, it. 
No, I wrote my notes. It's like, are they arresting the tumor? Why would a cop be there one way or the other? <laughs> I was hoping so. They were going to frisk the tumor. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be like, like in her lower back. Yeah, I'm wondering, like, I guess Sam wasn't invited to the party. Yeah. He didn't know about it. <laughs> That's a good point. Charlie's like, fuck you, Sam. I want people who actually love me and treat me kindly. Yeah, right. And aren't going to bum me out with all this miracle bullshit. She yeah. threw herself a death party and didn't invite her shitty husband. I didn't even catch That's that. That's beautiful. amazing. That's the best part. But isn't he narrating the scene, though? Yeah, well, that's the thing. He shows up, right? He shows up uninvited. But this movie is so self <laughs> or so male centered, right? It's, it's so centered on his experience and not hers. That of course. The movie treats it like she threw a surprise death party for herself for him. Oh, to get hit. Right. Yes. Right. And like, so, it, and, he, and, and he comes over in voiceover and he's like, you know, all the named characters in the movie were there and that turned out <laughs> not to be very many people. So I added like this guy that you've never seen. Uh, this is the <laughs> guy at the grocery store. I don't know if you Other remember. Other people were there. The person from the Other Ferris yeah. Yeah. The that guy from there. the Ferris wheel. He's there. He's there. That's, we had that actor for another day. And Tin Man Tin Man, you were there, and Scarecrow, you were there, there most of all. <laughs> our makeup artist was there. That's just our makeup right. artist. We couldn't make up a thing. Oh, shit. I like the idea of a pre-funeral party like this, though. Like, if I know I'm dying, that's a really absolutely. good idea. Oh, yeah, right? yeah, absolutely. That's great. Heath, I've got great news. <laughs> and that's right? when you have We're going to your... throw one for you next week. That's cool. all the plan. <laughs> for sure. That's when you ask all your friends to bring the meth. And I want I want like a big gender reveal thing at the end, except it's like, you know, the prognosis. But it's your gender? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we were wondering about it. So thank you in uh -huh. advance uh -huh. for that. Okay. Yeah. So we get, we get Sam praying weepily some more. They're like at this point, I'm writing in my notes, like, how are there still seven minutes? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, like, what the fuck? How right. long does it take to die? Just be done. Thank you. Just <laughs> die already. So we, she, they're going to go out one more time. We have to have the scene where the baby finally says mama so she can die mm -hmm. now. And I, <laughs> right. I feel like the baby is almost responsible for the death at that point. That's so ham-fisted. Had, had he never said mama, she'd be like 69 years old. By yes, now. right, oh, yeah. right, exactly. I'm just thinking, like, maybe don't teach mama when, like, you know, you're you're out of there. Like, I mean, you're right. Soon. Yeah, it's like, a waste of a word, really. He's yeah. not going to yeah. use <laughs> Give somebody else a shot. Yeah, and like, then, Uncle Baba or something. Let me throw out the anger and manipulation for this. Like, so here, here we are. I'm watching it. I have kids. I have had them as toddlers. And, like, the thought of dying while having toddlers is horrifying. Yeah. It's so sad to me. I'm like, what kind of fucker are you to put that in there? You're trying to manipulate me. So I'm like sad, but I'm only sad because I'm envisioning my kids. Right. But it's just such, just such a fucked up thing to do. Yeah, no, that's, the, that's their heart up. cell thing. Yeah. A hundred percent. I went through the exact same thing, which is I was like, okay, you might as well have like a three-legged puppy on screen right? to make me care about your shitty ass movie <laughs> that was about her used vagina 26 Thank you. minutes ago. <laughs> yes, right. Thank you. Fucking Tiny Tim crutches in. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone, you don't make a good movie because you upset me towards the end of it. Right, I right. know. She's like laying on the mattress saying, I want my baby. Why would you, like, fuck you for right. trying to get me sad. This movie still sucks a big, nasty, hairy dick. And, and like. The, Tell us how you really feel. That is how I feel. I just hate that shit because it's yes. just manipulation. Thank you. Because now in the movie, you are now getting someone to feel something in their heart because they're imagining being without their child and how horrifying that would be to die when your kid's young. And now it's like, oh, families are forever. They have to be because I wouldn't want to be without my child. Well, if families are forever, that's, I have to be Mormon. Right, the religion yeah. has to it be It leads back to this. Yes. It leads back to be a Mormon every fucking time. Yeah. It's like when Christian movies always try and stir us emotionally with like pictures or images of the crucifixion. And it always works. <laughs> it work, the, I go through the same emotional cycle every time we mm -hmm. watch it. I'll be like, oh, human suffering is sad. And then I go, wait a minute. That's the only human suffering that didn't matter. That guy did it on purpose. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> So, okay, so he takes her to the Ferris wheel. They ride the Ferris wheel one more, uh, one last time. And yes, she doesn't vomit. It would be so fucking funny if she just vomited everywhere. Yeah, she would have. Yeah, That's no, I know. Part. 
All right. Can I ask a question that is as brave as it is vulnerable? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, of course. If you take your dying wife to a Ferris wheel and she dies on the Ferris wheel, is that paperwork for the Ferris wheel? Or do you Ooh. have to like load her floppy body back into the car? At hmm. and, and do you oh. buckle her in at that point? Or is it a trunk situation? Yeah. Okay. Like, What's the move? Yeah, I get it. I get it. If you're because A, why would they even bother with the safety belt on the Ferris wheel? Bitch is dead. <laughs> anyway. Right. Exactly. Like, there's no need. <laughs> if anything, you could get a settlement, right? You, you yes. give her a little nudge. Yeah, okay. right. And exactly. then you're like, oh my God, yeah. my wife, who was yeah. normal, by the way, yeah. fell. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> I have a follow-up question about the etiquette of of this. Mm -hmm. If you're a kid at the front of that line, are you letting her go ahead of you? Oh, fuck no. I've been <laughs> not waiting. She's not going to enjoy it. No. No, she didn't let your ass go in no, front of her exactly, the last exactly. time she bought exactly. the ticket. And I can't, I can't really see pancreatic cancer. So right, like <laughs> that makes you. it harder for me to let you go ahead, right? Okay. Can you imagine how creepy that would be to the kids in line? There's this dude like basically carrying a woman that looks dead and like taking, like who, who would want their kid to see that? Yeah, no But kidding. it also looked like he bribed the the Ferris wheel owner or whatever, the, well, the Carney Ferris dude, to open it. Because it looked like fall yeah, or winter, yeah, 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 That's right, true. And right. Carney dude was at the funeral party. So yeah, he have known what's up. Was he? Yeah, he was there. We saw him. <laughs> I do have to point out, though, that the last time they were on the Ferris wheel, it was for her to make that weird blowjob joke. So when the guy lets them onto the Ferris wheel, he's got the look of like, doesn't really seem like the time to fuck her in the mouth, man. I mean, yeah, right. like, whatever you want to do, right? just, you've established a precedent. <laughs> he's not going to say anything. He's going to be like, I don't know, this is a, this, you probably shouldn't, but whatever, man, you have needs. It's Utah. Go ahead. Are you, are you doing is. a callback? I don't think that's the best right now. <laughs> So we get like, yeah, but they, they go on the funeral. She says, I don't want it to end. And we're all like, but we want it to end, though. And there are more of us than you. So she dies. <laughs> we get some funeral shots. He, he We get his VO and he's just like, you know, well, if you think about it, when Lazarus died, Jesus could have just been like, don't worry, I'm going to bring him back to life. But he didn't. He was all weepy and sad and made everyone go through grief. Oh, yeah. Anyway, that's the end of the movie. Yeah. Oh, my yeah. God. It feels like you, you might be wondering why now. And the, the movie's just like, God doesn't have to explain himself to you. That's why. Yep. Hands yeah. Down. Yeah, exactly. Don't question your religion if, if you're Mormon. Do because not families question. are forever. Yeah. <laughs> That's the Heart whole side. fucking point. And Mark 8 ass. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Mark 8 ass. And I'm not sure if Sam ever gets a job. No. <laughs> no, not that we know of. Doesn't seem like it. All right. Well, Mary Shelley, thank you so much for suffering through this one uh, with us, especially with all the uh, obvious triggers it had. <laughs> if our listeners wanted to hear more from you, and I'm sure they do, remind them where they should go. You know, you can listen to Latter Day Lesbian Podcast wherever you consume podcasts. Anywhere, everywhere. And I got to throw this in. Start at episode one. Oh, Shelley's a stickler <laughs> for that. Okay. All I'm right. all about going in order because they build, but... Whatever. Yeah. Please don't do that. With this show, don't do that. Yeah, don't do that. No, it's, it's, don't these do that. are completely different kinds of, of yeah. podcasts, but you've gotten to know our personalities. It's the same thing. It's just more funny and trauma. Yes, too. We also remained the same. Yes, yes. Yeah, exactly. We were always equally woke as we are now. <laughs> yes. So, all right. Well, and of course, we'll have it linked on the show notes as well. Uh, so you can check it out there. Well, that does it for our review of Charlie. That's not going to do it for the episode just yet because we still need to step on this same rake again next week. So, Eli, tell us what's on deck, bro. Well, Noah, we'll be doing Battlefield Earth live from Detroit. I'm so excited about that. I've been looking forward to that one for years. So with that to look forward to, we're going to bring episode 413 to a merciful close. Once again, a huge thanks to Mary and Shelley and a reminder that you can find a link to their show on the show notes and a perhaps even huger thanks to all the Patreon donors that help make the show go. If you'd like to count yourself among their ranks, you can make a per episode donation at patreon.com slash godawful and thereby earn an early access to an ad-free version of every episode. You can also help a ton by leaving a five-star review and by sharing the show on all your various social media platforms. And if you enjoyed this show, be sure to check out our sibling shows, The Scathing of the Ascent data, d and minus, and The Skeptocrat, available wherever podcasts live. If you have questions, comments, or cinematic suggestions, you can email godawfulmovies at gmail.com. Tim Robertson takes care of our social media. Our theme song was written and performed by Ryan Slot and Will Drafts on Mars. All the other music was written and performed by our audio engineer, Morgan Clark, and was used with permission. Thanks again for giving us a chunk of your life this week. For Heath Enright and Eli Bosnick, I'm No Illusions. Promise to work hard to earn another chunk next week. Until then, we'll leave you with a Breakfast Club close. Mark, who ate ass has a really happy life in New York City with a partner who's alive. Sam eventually did stop hunching his shoulders. 
Turns out Charlie was waiting for the high school boy she made out with under the bleachers in heaven instead of Sam. Her bad. Oops. Maybe I paid two dollars and ninety nine cents to not have to watch the ads. But looking back, you know, it would have been nice to have that break. We could have chugged yeah, beer was, uh, at each ad. No, it was exactly. a good expenditure. That <laughs> was really <laughs> worth it. Yeah, that I will never get that hour and a half back or the two dollars and ninety nine cents. I, feel I mean, we like can reimburse you for me. the two ninety nine. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> it's gonna take more than that, fellas. <laughs> I have lost brain Yeah, the therapy's on sense. you, though. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> fair. Fair. The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2023. All rights reserved.